Hey everybody, tonight we're debating whether or not God created the universe, and we are starting right now with Ronnie's opening statement. Thanks so much for being with us, Ronnie. The floor is all yours. All right, thank you, James. So, um, yeah, I believe atheists are uh, they're in a tough spot when it comes to explaining the origins of everything because atheists only have two options to work with, really. So option one, something came from nothing. Or option two, something simply always existed infinitely into the past. But both of these options are illogical as something forming from absolute nothing is impossible. And as well, something eternally existing without an initial cause is just illogical. It's unscientific. It's unscientific and philosophically unsound. Uh, when properly examined, we realize the ultimate origins of everything is simply beyond a raw scientific explanation. Therefore, a supernatural explanation, or God, is the only plausible one. Science also can explain the fine-tuning of the fundamental properties of the universe without resorting to multiverse theory, which uh, can't be proven or disproven. And essentially, it's not science. And as well, the multiverse theory, to me and to many, just intuitively doesn't make sense when broken down and fleshed out. Um, as I'm sure we're going to do, um, only the existence of God can explain why the universe is tuned for order and life. I don't want to get into all the aspects of fine tuning in my opening, but for now, I'll just say that if, say, for instance, the cosmological constant were to be changed just one part in 10 to the power of 120, the universe would either fly away or collapse. And if we increase the strength of gravity by just one part in 10 to the power of 34, the universe couldn't have life sustaining planets. So the universe could have been made in infinitely, uh, an infinite amount of different ways, right? Um, but uh, we do have a finely tuned universe. Um, and, and that universe that we see before us um, could have either it came about through random chance or through some sort of fine tuning. What makes more sense to you is the question um, that I asked. Could randomness produce such a, a perfect tune? Um, I think no. I think clearly intelligence was behind the creation. Um, the second thing I want to get into is uh, the existence of God also explaining why there is a universe instead of absolute nothingness. Science can't even offer a reason for why there's a universe instead of nothingness. If you think about it, the universe would actually make more sense and be easier to explain if it never existed. Non-existence continuing to non-exist is an easy concept to imagine. Eternal nothingness and nothing ever happening. But the fact that something happened and we do have a universe begs the question, why? Why is there a universe instead of nothingness? Nothingness could easily be the state of a godless realm. So why would there even be a universe if a non-universe is an easier task to do? But if God exists, we would sure he would surely create a realm in which life can exist, aka a universe or a multiverse. God is viewed in all belief systems, wants there to be life. And believers in God see life as a gift because if not for God, there would be no existence at all. So a belief in God helps not only offer a spiritual existence beyond the material, but can answer the question why there's something instead of nothing from, I guess, a more cerebral point of investigation. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that. And uh, I'm going to pass it on over to Mark for his opening statement. You got it. Thank you very much for that opening statement, Ronnie. And want to let you know, folks, if it's your first time here at Modern Day Debate, we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. We hope you feel welcome no matter what walk of life you are from. And we have many juicy debates coming up. For example, at the bottom right of your screen, Muslim Kenny Bomer and Matt Dillahunty will be debating in person, live streamed for the public on whether or not Islam is true. You don't want to miss this one. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button so you don't see all of the public live debates from our in-person conference in Plano, Texas on Saturday, November 19th. That's coming up fast, folks. So, as I mentioned, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that epic party. And with that, thanks very much, Mark, for being with us. The floor is all yours. Thank you so much, James. And I'll just uh, share my screen there, mate. Just tell me when it is on and I will get started. Thank you. Do you need a drum roll? 
Okay, fantastic. Thanks, James. Uh, my name is Mark Reid, and I have the pleasure of taking the negative position for Did God Create the Universe? I want to thank Modern Day Debate for hosting this topic, as well as my opponent, Ronnie, for joining me in this debate. This is a tremendously important topic, and one we ought not to take frivolously. It's only by understanding the universe can we understand our place in it. And furthermore, it's important to, uh, it is important to understand our universe to possibly move beyond it to the greater cosmos, if one exists. So let's get down to it. Let, let's find out. Um, these are the requirements for my opponent, and it seems obvious, and, and these are the requirements because he is taking uh, the affirmative, of course. Um, it seems obvious, but it's important to understand why it's, it's crucial to demonstrate these concepts as true rather than assert the truth with any kind of justification. Hopefully, we will see consistent and detailed evidence for the claims that are being made. Uh, firstly, a God must exist to, to create anything. If that's not demonstrated, then a, 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 not, a God that doesn't exist can't create anything. Um, the universe cannot be the necessary state of being or the initial conditions as it would not need a God to, to create it at all. And the universe must be demonstrated that it has been created by the aforementioned God. It's, it seems odd, but a God could be proven to exist, but that does not necessarily mean that the God created the universe. Of course, it does depend on your definition of a God and the attributes it possesses, which is vitally important. And I'd like uh, that to be the first topic of the open discussion. Um, so I want to talk about the burden of proof. And I'm taking the negative, which is the easier position, of course. My opponent is the one making the positive knowledge claim and therefore taking on the burden of proof to demonstrate that, in fact, God did create the universe. Um, I would be taking the position that God has not met this burden of proof and challenge my opponent to provide justification for believing the universe was created by deity. However, in the interest of fairness, I will be discussing some of the reasons I believe that no God was involved in the formation of the universe and it is unreasonable to believe that a God was involved. Um, I do want to mention, though, that requiring me to disprove the existence of a God is shifting the burden of proof. There's a, there's a million things I could come up with that are completely unfalsifiable. You could never disprove them. I could suggest interdimensional aliens, magic energy, uh, waves outside the universe in the cosmos, millions of other explanations. It is not the requirement of those who hear the claim to disprove them. As Hitchens Razor says, that which is asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. If you were to believe every claim until it has been completely disproved, proven to maintain intellectual consistency you would have to believe every religion conspiracy theory and outlandish claim ever made this is completely and utterly unreasonable um, this is the example of russell's teapot our philosopher here has a invisible and tangible teapot in orbit around jupiter claims that it is there um, the burden of proof is on the philosopher making the claim to prove it exists not for anybody else hearing the claim to disprove it. Without any evidence, a claim like this can be dismissed as unwarranted. That does not necessarily mean it's un it is untrue, but it is not rational to believe it and to prevent it with evidence that it actually, in fact, exists. Um, the other problem we run into a lot, and I, I do not claim to know where the uh, universe originated from. That doesn't mean any other explanation given... Um, is given credibility by a lack of explanation. You need to provide evidence for your explanation that is independent from any other possible explanation. If you claim a God made the universe, you have to provide the evidence for this claim, not evidence against any other claim. Disproving any scientific hypothesis gets you no closer to a God explanation being true, and trying to do so is God of the gaps. So these are two philosophers in ancient Greeks. They're asked where earthquakes come from. One philosopher says, I don't know, and the other says, Poseidon. Now, um, the, just because one philosopher does not know does not make the God explanation any more likely or correct, even though we know the opposition is not providing an explanation, although we know now that earthquakes were caused by geological forces, even though people in the time believed it was the, the sea god. Um, religions have been doing this since the dawn of time, have been wrong on the God explanation for absolutely everything bar none. Lightning caused by gods, disease, crop growth caused by gods, the star movements caused... The list goes on and on and on. Um, in fact, one of the reasons why the God hypothesis for the universe is unlikely is because theists think God or gods have caused almost every natural phenomenon at some point in the past, and they have been wrong every single time without fail. 
And I want to clarify what I mean by evidence. It's a body of facts that is are, uh, exclusively indicative of one conclusion. Evidence is only as good as the methods used to gather it, and we must avoid bias and objectively gather evidence for the origin of the universe. A reliable method would be repeatable by anybody, take all conclusions into account. Um, I won't dwell on this, but I'd like to examine my opponent's methods when it comes to the uh, open, open dialogue. Um, this is a major problem I foresee happening. You cannot call a universe a creation without first demonstrating the creator. I already went over this in the requirements section, so I won't spend too long on it. I wish to focus briefly on the idea that appealing to something like a god, uh, we have less knowledge of the, nat uh, of the natural world does not solve the problem. I could insert a million things that could create the universe, but making it more vague doesn't in improve my argument. Um, I cannot presuppose the origin of the universe just because my explanation relies on it. Uh, here's an example, okay, because I realise that's a bit wordy. I could say the universe was formed magically by a Blarney stone and assume the universe has a magical origin. Now, that's begging the question, as I would not have demonstrated the universe has a magical origin. And, and even if I said the magical universe, I would have to demonstrate that is, in fact, the case. Um, so I want to go through some of the hypotheses posed by scientists. Now, I do want to make a disclaimer that I'm not a cosmological physicist, so my understanding of these models are basic at best. Um, all of the models are similar, and physicists do not claim to know exactly which one is right, if any of these at all. It seems to be related to quantum field theory with the universe forming from a quantum field. In the case of M theory, the mathematical models fit what we expect to see very accurately. However, we don't know exactly how the universe formed. So I want to refer back to this point as God of the gaps argument I was discussing earlier. Just before, because scientists don't know exactly how doesn't mean a God explanation holds any credence whatsoever. It needs its own evidence. Um, one of the reasons I think the God explanation is unlikely is because the universe is vast, doesn't seem to have any significance to us or any other entity. There are a lot of naturalistic destruction and chaos happening for no apparent reason at all. Why are there stars going supernova on the other side of the universe? Our Milky Way will eventually collide with Andromeda and, you know, be destroyed. Um, why is the vacuum of space not actually stable and in a metastable state? Um, having quantum fields rather than being a stable vacuum, no one seems to know. And there seems no good explanations aside from natural processes, which, as I pointed out earlier, has been the explanation we have found every single time we have investigated any phenomenon. Um, this is the main reason I don't believe a God exists. As our understanding of neurology has developed, we understand that the mind seems to be an emergent property of brain states. Now, dualists want to claim that the mind exists somewhere outside the brain, but there's no evidence to support this. Um, consider, for example, split brain patients that have two hemispheres of their, their brain split. These two hemispheres are bound to have different personalities and different consciousness, even different likes and dislikes. And, and one patient was even found to have one hemisphere that was a theist and one hemisphere that was an atheist. Um, study of this is advanced neuroscience, especially in the field of intrapersonal theory of mind, and suggests that mind and consciousness is an emergent property of the brain's neurological functions and not a separate um, entity of itself. Um, so that concludes my presentation, and I do want to thank you for your time, and um, I'll send it back to James. Thank you very much for that opening, Mark. And want to let you know, folks, we are thrilled to have you here. No matter what walk of life you were from, thanks for being with us as well as I'm going to get us into the open discussion. But before I do, I want to mention a couple of quick little housekeeping things. In particular, folks... If you have been living in a cave on Mars with your fingers in your ears, our second conference, which is going to have seven different debates over the course of the entire day on Saturday, November 19th in Plano, Texas, is nearly upon us. This one's going to be epic. I've got to tell you folks, seriously, if you haven't yet, check out the links in the description box. In particular, you can find a link for the actual in-person tickets, as well as the link for the crowdfund, which you can see the crowdfund meter for this event as we were trying to raise funds for the venue. We are going to make it to our goal. We're 57% of the way there. We're thrilled about that. And that's important because we are striving to provide a neutral platform so that everybody has their chance to make their case on a level playing field, including, as you can see on the bottom right, one of the debates that'll happen at that conference is Aaron Ra versus Daniel Hakikachu. It is going to be absolutely bonkers, my friends. With that, 
Thank you very much, gentlemen. The floor is yours for that roughly 50 minutes of open dialogue. Thank you so much, James. Um, I think the first thing that I brought up that we should probably get pinned down, Ronnie, is, is what the actual definition of your God or the attributes associated with your God is, whether it is a necessary being or, or what kind of um, um, agent we're actually dealing with here. I'd actually like to tackle a few things before we get into that, um, because it, just to kind you of set up... Think- that's important. No, I do think it's important. Um, I just don't think that's necessarily a good uh, place for us to start right now. You said something earlier, um, well, in your, in your opening about um, the needing to provide proof of God. Evidence, um, not proof. Well, so okay. proof, yeah, proof would be like a a um, um, sort of like what you would call sort of overwhelming evidence, I guess. Colloquially. Beyond like a reasonable doubt. Right, right. But but sort of what I'm talking about is sort of a, as I said, a body of facts that would be conclusively indicative of one um, conclusion over any other conclusion and, and is supported by sort of multiple lines that all show that that conclusion is correct. Well, I'm sort of using a process of, of elimination to show that God is the only option, regardless of what his attributes are or his, his uh, you know, all of his defining features. Um, I want to ask you a question. Do you agree that the universe is either created by God or it wasn't? Well, let's just go back one step, because deductively, if, if I can suggest millions upon millions of possible explanations, how are you eliminating all of them one by one? They will fall into either one of two categories. They will fall into either, yes, there is a God or no, there is no God. And we can do that if you'd like. But I'm sure you would actually agree with me that. It, well, I, yeah, let's let's, I guess, run that through, um, because well, I believe well, firmly that there is either. Uh, God is either responsible for the universe or or he's not. There is no real in-between. Right. So what you're talking about now is ontology, like whether metaphysically there is a God or not a God, right? So, yes, it is true and it is a true dichotomy that there either is a God in actuality or not a God in actuality. But further than that, that's not enough. As I pointed out, you not only have to demonstrate a God, you have to demonstrate that the God did in fact create the universe universe. You could demonstrate a God all live long day, but unless that God is demonstrated to have created the universe, you still haven't, you still haven't met your burden of proof. So you, you do agree fundamentally either God created the universe or he didn't. So if, if, if I can yeah. prove that there is no other explanation, then by default, God would have to be responsible because there is no other explanation. So I don't necessarily have to prove that God did create the universe. I can prove that there is no other way for the universe to have been formed. It is true that um, there, it is a true dichotomy that either God did create the universe or did not create the universe. That That is a true dichotomy. And it's a true dichotomy that the universe was either created by God or it wasn't. Well, yeah, that's exactly what I said. Well, it's it's slightly different wording, but yeah, I just I was hoping that you weren't playing a word game on me. So no, yeah, no, no, basically, no, no. I'm just being specific yeah. in my language. So we have that's behind all. door number one, we'll say all natural causes and science. Behind door number two is the supernatural and God. No, 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 I'm no, attempting no, 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 Can no, I finish on, my Ronnie. sentence? Yeah, sorry. I just I just want to want to say that you've changed the dichotomy now because you've changed the dichotomy from God not God to God and natural, right? Well, natural would be meaning not God. So I don't want to play a word game. No, as I brought up, I brought up a magical Blarney stone that's supernatural that created the universe, which is not God and it is not natural or science. So that I can show you. Yeah, let's explore that because I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah. I can show by using that example that what you've just proposed, not the earlier one, which is a true dichotomy, the one you just proposed is a false dichotomy because something could have created. I I know what you're saying. Can God God by not natural if God exists by definition? Is he capable of creating a universe? Yes or no? Nothing, nothing exists by definition. That's a terrible way to no, say No, 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 no. I'm saying so if nothing. God exists, comma, mm-hmm. by definition, comma, he would therefore be capable of creating a universe. If God well, exists, yes, he would be capable pro- of creating a universe. This is, yes? the, see, this is the problem, Ronnie. You're, you're, Don't you're basically, assume you know no, where no, I'm no, going no, 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 you, you haven't even let me finish because you're basically saying I'm asking that God, you a question. No, no, no. Ronnie, come on. Let me finish, mate. Come on. 
Be, come on. I am. I'm, I'm basically saying that you're providing hypotheticals when you won't even determine the type of God that you're talking about. Remember earlier when I said we've got to define the God and you said, no, I want to do this first. This is exactly the reason why we've got to define the God that you're talking about. I don't about. need to do that in order to prove that God is responsible for the creation of the universe. Then I can't answer your question because you're asking a question whether God could do something or couldn't do something. Uh, okay. So let me uh, let me finish on the basis of whether that whether that God is capable of doing something you have not, in fact, defined it capable of. If it is a necessary being, then, yes, it could create a universe, but you haven't defined your God. Okay, so I'm, I'm not trying to define a specific God. What I'm saying is that God, the the almighty creator in in omnipotent being what people recognize as the definition of god being the creator of everything if he exists then it, it he it's he is capable of creating universe i mean I, i'm just trying to establish something that i think is obvious that most people would agree so that i can carry it forward in the little thought experiment so i sure. again i'll ask you the question if god exists would he be capable of creating universe if a god exists that is an almighty creator and an omnipotent being that you then you know, yes under those, then yes okay so is a piece of limestone capable of creating a universe no okay so knowledge. that's why your uh, analogy or what you propose is responsible for the creation of the universe doesn't make sense because you you said i could say a little piece of limestone is responsible for the creation of the universe but you can't because the definition and the features of a limestone are incapable of creating a universe but the definitions and, and features uh, of God are capable of creating universe. So the only thing beyond the natural that's capable of creating the universe is God. Do you accept that? I said it was no, because I said it was the Blarney stone. I never said it was limestone. Sorry, fact, whatever. This, this line, this, this Blarney stone is magical and magic is created capable of creating the universe by definition, because magic is capable of anything by okay. definition. So, so this particular stone, even though it is not natural and a supernatural stone, has all the magic properties in order to be able to do anything. It just doesn't have a mind to be able to want to do anything. Does it have all the powers and capabilities that God would have? I don't know. I don't know which. I'm asking you. About. You're the one suggesting this. It has the power to create a universe. Then I would say that would be God. So if you're saying that that is a possible explanation for universe for the universe, that just fits into the category of God because it so has God, all the features that God would have. You're just calling it a blind what what kind of a stone? stone. Yeah, stone. exactly. Um, so God doesn't so it have it would a mind. it would essentially be God. You're just choosing to call it something else. So God doesn't have a mind. Well, I'm saying if it's responsible for the creation of the, I, I actually well, don't even a question. know act specifically how to answer the question of does God have a mind? It, does it operate mm -hmm. as some sort of um, energy? Does it operate as some sort of entity? Are there angels? I, I don't want to get into all of that. What I'm trying yeah. to suggest is that atheism does not have an answer for how the universe formed. No, no, no. It, it's, Science this, doesn't this, have an answer. It this can't Blani, answer. This Blani stone is definitionally not God. But it is capable of doing anything that that creates the universe. So it's it's purely a supernatural thing. Did that it? It's definitionally not God that can create the universe. So this is all just a. Hold on. Is you, it responsible how, for on, the creation of let, itself? Let me, let me, is let this me stone finish. responsible for finish. the creation let of itself? Finish. Let me finish. So your you. <laughs> your onus is on to disprove that this thing in fact exists. So disprove it. No, it's not. Right yes, now, I'm trying to establish that anything that is responsible for the creation of the universe that you has no it. ultimate origins, I can't disprove this thing because it, it might in fact origins. be God. It's, it's, it's what you're describing is magical. literally God. So if yeah, yeah, it exists, magic. then you'd be proving my yeah, point. Yeah, it's definitionally not God. Oh, but it's responsible for its own creation. Can it's responsible for the formation of the universe. It, it, that would be God. Definitionally, it's not. So can you disprove that that is the, the creator of the universe or that is the origin point of the universe? I, I can, you, can you ask the question one more time? Can you prove that that did not, uh, that is not the origin of the universe, the Blarney Stone? If the Blarney Stone has features that are beyond an actual stone and it now becomes God, then yes, it's it magic. is capable. It's not God, it's magic. Okay, you're just calling it magic, but if it has all the features that no, God I'm not. has, it's, then it's it would definitionally, be God. It's definitionally not God. It's magic. It's completely different. 
Can you prove that that doesn't exist? Okay, prove it doesn't exist. What you're prove it's, it doesn't it's like exist. This. <laughs> we it's both talked about how right? ultimately. No, 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 Ronnie, Ronnie. It's you're getting you're getting right? very very just aggressive. Just to be sure here. that we hear. No, no, no. Well, it's, hold on, it's fine. So it's... we can actually hear one person at a time because if if people are speaking over each other, they can't hear either side. Yeah, sure. I'll get to my point in a sec. Runny, go, and then, I, then I'll sort of point out what I'm, what I'm getting at through this this sort of exercise in thought. Okay, it's kind of like this. If I say, um, can, can, a, can a stone walk and talk and, and throw a football? But what if this stone has arms? What if this is a magical stone? I, I mean, what is it that you're really even asking me here? You're now going to give the stone all the features that a human has. And it no longer becomes a stone. It becomes a human. So that's exactly what you've done here with your stone. It's responsible for the formation of the universe. It created a, a tuned universe in which me and you are sitting here talking. It's responsible for the formation of itself. I wouldn't call it a stone. I would say what you're describing here is God. Okay. Okay. So the reason why I'm doing this is to show you that sort of me claiming something is the origin of the universe isn't enough. I should have to yeah, provide I get that's what evidence you're trying to that do. this exists. But this is exactly what you are doing. You are claiming that God is the origin of the universe, but yet you're not you're not in any way providing any evidence for this to be the case. You are simply saying that no one else gets to put an explanation there when there are in infinite explanations. I could just say a magical field and, and you have nothing to say you would about be surprised. what this magical field can or cannot do to be the origin of the universe. You are doing the same thing that I'm doing. And, and you know, you can shake your head all you like, but you haven't provided any evidence that a god exists you've just said hey i i've deduced that there is no other explanation when you have not in fact done that okay well i i agree with your your first the first part of that last little segment that i haven't proved that god exists that god exists but what i'm attempting to prove is that there is no other way for the universe to have been formed because science is essentially handcuffed it has no way of getting to ultimate origins because it's left with only two options which is something existing infinitely into the past which doesn't make sense or something coming from nothing which doesn't make sense if you can provide a third scenario in which the universe could have come about or something could have come about i'd like to hear it but i believe sure. you are handcuffed to those two illogical positions so if those two if, if if science basically says hey listen all we have to offer is something illogical then what are you left with you're left so, with God. It's the only other option because we know magical stones didn't create the universe. We know none of these hypotheticals that you could bring up didn't create the universe. It could only be God or wasn't God. And I think it's it's actually immature of you to suggest that there could be these special little things that could or, or magical little leprechauns living on some weird in some weird dimension that's that, that created the universe. I mean, this is just absolutely insane because we can break down all of those things that you're describing and either prove how a they aren't god and then if you switch their features um so that they act like god well then they're just becoming god and you're just choosing to call god a leprechaun instead of calling him what he is which would be god the creator of of all that is yeah so you gish got the little bit there so I'll, I'll go over every single point um you're basically saying that science is constrained by these two things but it's not and your idea of something from nothing nothing is actually a quantum field when lawrence krauss used it you're, you're misrepresenting what nothing is and i mean i i do want to put back to your introduction where you said that nothingness um you talked about nothingness and i, I want to know what is nothing because you're talking about it like it's something but it's nothing you say it's childish for me to bring up the examples well i could throw it back at you i think it's childish for you to make up a magic man to solve the problem that you don't know where the universe came from that's equally childish and equally demonstrable as the explanation that i made up it's just you don't see it that way even though you cannot provide any evidence for your claim what you are in fact doing is basically saying i'm going to claim there is a god not provide evidence for it and then say you've got to disprove it in order for it to be correct and that is not not how the burden of proof works. You have done nothing to address your burden of proof and you don't seem interested in doing so, which is incredible. 
Um, okay, and, if we're talking and about burden you of proof said, of like no, actually no, 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 revealing no, 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 no. and Ronnie, showing Ronnie, God, that's you, just you ridiculous. I want to, I want to address every point you make because you dish gallop down a number. Now you said I thought if you I were could done. provide another explanation, then then that would be fine. A cyclic recursive universe would solve that problem, and there is no problem with infinite regress in a naturalistic universe. There's no problem with that. I'm done. Thank you. Okay. So um, do you agree that infinity can't actually exist as a thing? It can only exist as a potential? Or do you think infinity can exist as an actual state? Um, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're anything talking at about, all. Well, if you're talking about time. No, um, anything at all, Mark. Do you think infinity can actually exist as a state or does it only exist as a potential? Because I think this is just a clear like answer. It only exists as a potential. It doesn't exist as a state. I mean, I, I challenge no, I, anybody I Google that, this right now. Is there anything that's actually infinite or does this only is this only expressed as a potential? I think I think that it is possible for things to be eternal. I think that is possible. Well, you're just do you wrong. think it's do you think it's impossible for things to be eternal? There, it, it's impossible for there to be an infinite state of anything because you like if, God. Don't jump beyond that because what I'm going to do is extend jump beyond this. what. Okay, don't don't assume you know what I'm going to say or just jump uh, the train of thought. Okay, because I didn't say that. Well, I mean, if you're saying that things can't be infinite, then God can't be omnipotent. You're going to get into the whole special power thing. And if you say things can, can be that. infinite and something can be omnipotent, then things can be infinite. And you've just conceded that point. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to establish something here. A uh, it, it, there is no such thing as an infinite state of anything. Therefore, the past cannot be infinite because the past has already happened, Right. So we it, it can be quantified. It's not continuing to grow into the past, right? So the past is not infinite. It is actually finite. Do you agree with this? Um, for your uh, for your for what you said about the past, no. You're talking about the A theory of time. The past has already happened. B theory is probably the one I would subscribe to, and that sort of says that all events are happening concurrently, and we just happen to flow with the direction of entropy. Um, if you consider the beginning hold on, hold on. Of the can universe, I pause you one second there because you said something very important. Sure. You you said that um, essentially all time is happening at once. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the That's past theory, is happening yeah. right now and the future is happening right now. Well, it, it's your understanding of time that seems to be. Not no, no, no. I'm just, a, theory, I, I don't, I'm just asking. No, no. I understand these theories. Don't assume that I don't. So if this is what you believe in, I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that, that we're getting everything clear here. You believe that the future is happening right now and the past is happening right now. Yes or no? So that's, a, that's a malformed question because when you say no, you're, you're placing upon you're placing a certain point in time along that 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 time right you're you're, you're making it now um so I, I I think that's a malformed question do you believe what yesterday like happened to, yesterday and tomorrow's going to happen yeah, tomorrow of course, of course. okay now, so then there now, is a place on the timeline time does move forward right? Well, to, to us, yes, it does move forward with entropy, to, yes. Okay, and to, um, but but I want to get there to this point. Time I want to get to this point. Yeah, you, you, this isn't this is an interrogation. I want to get to this point. The point is that if you go back to the origins of the universe, and don't forget, space time is local to our universe, right? You're it pivoting. is a hundred percent. No, I'm not. This is the original point I wanted to get out. From where we are right now. It. Because no, 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 not, you don't want to hammer stop, down where stop, you, stop, what you stop, believe. Stop, do you believe stop, the past Ronnie, and the stop. future and the right, present are all talk. happening at once? Yes or no? Well, you are being absolutely obnoxious. This, just because uh, I got to mute you both. So just to be sure that we're all on the same page, people aren't able to hear you guys. So I'm going to put it into one minute responses from each of you. And then we'll go from there to where each of you will be able to respond in that 60 seconds each. Uh, who gets to ask much. you first? Um, yeah, I was talking about something on what you said, where you said, well, past, like if you go back to the beginning of the universe and, and space time is local to this universe, saying before the universe started is a nonsensical thing. So it could be that the universe was in a certain state for an infinite amount of time, because as you go back in time, time does not exist and start rolling. 
it is very possible for that to be true. And nothing about that contravenes the, the, the physics if it is true. Okay, so I'm going to ask my question again. Do you believe that all time is happening at once? The future, the past, and the present, it's all happening at once? That seems to be the best theory of time, yes, in my opinion. Okay, so when I was asking you that before, why didn't you just say that instead of trying to complicate things and say, well, that's not really a good way to ask the question. No, I don't really like this. And you started yelling. Why not just say what you just said there? I didn't yell. I just was trying to get my my words out from because you keep interrupting me. Now it's because okay. you said you said the whole point is that you said now. But that's just and, one and question in a train down, of thought. Now I can't yeah, see, get to that because see, you're going to derail and pivot. I can't even talk, Ronnie. You're terrible. I can't even. talk. If I ask you a question, and obviously I'm I'm <sighs> aiming that to go somewhere. So if you just answer yes. and then ramble on, you're not allowing me a chance to flesh out my so, idea. You're just hijacking the conversation, which isn't fair. I think what when we got to do say, here is if a person yeah, asks I think a question, Ronnie, I there, on a hold timer. on a second, please. Let me, is, Sorry, James. If, we, if you ask a question, we've got to give them the full minute to respond. They may in turn say, here's the answer to your question, X. And then they might say, no, I'm going to ask you my question. And they set it up and maybe it takes 20 seconds to set it up. Like I, I've got to allow that because they want to, each side wants to ask questions. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a minute for a response. And if a person does ask a question though like they're turning it over to the other person for a minute they're not it's not like you can okay we're not going to have you guys where if you're like one person's asking eight questions in a row the other person's asking eight questions in a row it's just it's very mm. difficult well it's very that. common in a debate you know you ask the person a question they say yes okay fair enough this this and that but if you ask them a question they say yes okay now bam 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 and they shoot back it's really hard to, pro- I would to recommend progress in the conversation writing down or even that's typing. what i'm gonna do yeah even just typing what it is that you were asking them. And then what you could do is with your free minute in the next one, you could just go, last time I asked you blah, blah, blah. And you said X, here's my follow-up question. So blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. That way it kind of refreshes, it kind of like refreshes the audience. Cause for the audience, there's so much information flying around. It's hard to yeah. keep track. So give you a chance to whoever it was that was asking the last question. Can you guys remind me who it was? Well, I didn't get a chance to ask a question on the end of my answer. I, I want to ask Ronnie how he knows that there was some sort of, uh, he, that well, there was not an infinite time at the beginnings of the universe. How, how did he determine that? I don't. But what I do look at is what science says about, I guess, uh, the nature of reality, cause and effect. And you need to have an explanation. And infinite... Sorry, my cat is, come on, Phil, you can't do that. Um, Infinity cannot extend into the past from a purely scientific standpoint. You need something, I'll use your words, magical in order to get beyond this problem. So that magic that we use to get beyond the problem of how something can't exist eternally into the past is God. So um, I'm going to now ask you a quick question since we're going in this this weird way. Um, is is there a beginning uh, to the universe since you believe that the future, the past and the present are all happening at once? Wouldn't the uh, wouldn't a future moment have to have to take place simultaneously um, as uh, the, the initial point of, of the universe, making the initial origin point of the universe nonsensical? I don't know if there is a um, origin event to the universe or whether it has eternally existed. I, I don't know. Um, but going back to your answer, it, it's it, why did you say that you don't know um, if infinity cannot extend to the past and then claim that infinity cannot extend to the past? And you basically said you you have no evidence for this. Do you have any evidence to back this up? I think infinity can extend into the past if we're talking about God, and you're going to say this is special pleading. But what I'm going to say in response to that is that God, by definition, requires special pleading. Okay, he he is beyond the universe. He is beyond nature. If if he were to not re- have uh, require special pleading, he wouldn't be God because then there would be a natural explanation for him, and he wouldn't be God. I mean, this is something very easily understood by a lot of philosophers. I've been in I've been in plenty of chat rooms. I've been in plenty of discussions where even atheists will fully admit this. It's like you have to be consistent with what you're saying. Right. So if you believe in God, you're saying that you believe in something that's beyond nature, that's beyond scientific explanation. But if you're an atheist, you cannot do that. 
by definition, you are not allowed to say that. But by definition, a believer in God is. So this is a situation where special pleading is is permitted. If you want to call it special pleading, you smirk and you laugh because you're like, wow, this guy actually says uh, special pleading is permitted. And I guess, you know, most scenarios uh, you're going to have, well, I guess all other scenarios, you're going to have two natural beings. Okay. You're not allowed to have special beings because they're both products of this universe. But when you're saying that one being is beyond this universe, then of course, of course, the same, uh, uh, I guess, uh, restraints are not going to be attached to that. If you find that funny, if you find that hard to believe, um, you're just not as smart as what you think you are. Oh, no, no, I find that hilarious because you basically said you've got to be consistent in what you're saying and then go on to make the logical fallacy of special pleading, which is an inconsistency fallacy. It's basically mm-hmm. saying that my explanation has a exception and is therefore by definition is absolutely inconsistent. To have intellectual inconsistency, you have to basically say that either some things, everything can do this, or, or, or everything can't do this. You can how do we have do believers special... in God? Yeah, James, could um you mute Ronnie? That was just a quick question. I didn't. Fair. I'm not going to mute. That was just a quick yet. question, but, man. Yeah, I, I do want to say, Ronnie, you do do have to give him a chance to finish. But to be fair, there was a point early in the debate where Ronnie said, "Can I finish?" And then Mark, you continued. So I, I do want it like it's it's going both ways. Okay. Where both of you okay. guys. Okay. Well, I mean, I thought packing. we were doing minute responses and For the you know. Love of, but... Yeah, I know. I like I just said. I, I said, Ronnie, like I, you do have to let him finish. But I, yeah, okay. I was just explaining that both sides are extra passionate tonight. So, yes. Ronnie, you do have to let him finish. Go ahead. Ready for you. Okay. Ronnie. Excellent. So, so yeah. So this 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 whole special pleading is is not being consistent. It's intellectual inconsistency. It is creating an exemption for that which you wish were true. Um, that can be done for literally anything. It can be done for the magical field that I was talking about earlier. It can be done for a a a, a unicorn that did it. It can be done for just about anything. Um, what this leads to is basically a um, a cognitive dissonance between um, what what you want to be true and what is actually true. Because if you're using special pleading, you can always make exceptions to logic and rationality to get around that. Um, um, and and I guess to, to to send you a question back because that was that was that was something. Um, so you're basically saying that physics could not have done this, but you're going on to say physics or, or, or the universe is random. Um, and and I, I want to know why you think it's random and not a deterministic system like most physicists would say. Okay, first off, when we, you, you laugh at the special pleading, but would you not agree that every person who believes in God is using some sort of uh, special pleading in order to uh, explain God's existence? Well, can, that doesn't answer my question. We can come back to my question in a sec. I, I think that that most theists would say they're not using special pleading because they are aware that it's a logical fallacy and sort of intellectual inconsistency, yeah. Okay, so all theists that I talk to say that God has no creation. There is no, it's God didn't create himself and there is no cause for God's existence. That's right. But they do say that the universe requires a, a creation. Well, the, the, the so that is, is that... special pleading. I, I, I am, I put forth that all believers in God use some form of special pleading. No. If they just don't like to use the term because in 99% of the cases, it's something that you shouldn't do. But if we get to, if we want to be consistent, God is beyond nature. He's beyond science. So we are permitted to use special pleading for this being that is beyond your rules. He's not. Yes. It's the only circumstance, maybe the only circumstance where if we weren't to use special pleading, we would no longer be describing God. We would be describing a natural being. Okay, so what what they're actually doing, and I'm, I'm not sure why you don't understand this, is that basically we're separating things into necessary and contingent states of being, right? Necessary beings and not contingent beings. So we're separating things into things that don't require an explanation and things that do require an explanation. And that isn't just theists, it's also other philosophers kind of thing. So some will argue that the universe or the cosmos around it is a necessary state of being kind of thing. Um, okay, so, so that is special pleading is not what they're doing they're being consistent with everybody else 
and everybody, some other person may say, hey, the universe is a necessary state of being. They're not using special pleading. Just as if a theist says, hey, God doesn't require an explanation, isn't special pleading. And I'm sorry you don't No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. God doesn't require an explanation. What every theist would say is that the universe requires an explanation. The universe can't just come about randomly. It was formed by God. But then if you ask that same theist, well, what created God? He's going to say God always existed. And then you could say that's special pleading. Right? Well, if, if you're saying that everything requires a explanation, then yes, that is special no. pleading. But if you're saying that there are necessary states of being, then that's not special pleading because you're saying that there are two categories of things, necessary and contingent things. Okay, so so here's here's where where it differs. A, a special pleading would be me saying everything requires an explanation of where it came from, except for God and right. that one thing alone. Right? That right. is special pleading. If you're saying there's two categories of things: necessary and contingent things. God is a necessary thing. That is not special pleading because you are not saying that everything requires an explanation except for this one thing. But how could you, how could one say that God is necessary and the universe is necessary? That becomes contradictive. No, so what no, I'm saying no. is in order for a theist to be consistent, he is using some form of special pleading. So if if the universe is in fact infinite time, as I described at the start of universe, like if, if the singularity is that dense and supergravity occurs, we have infinite amount of time um, or time slows rather um, under the, the, you know, the hypothetical physics down to a point where there is no actual beginning like t equals zero um, for an infinite um, um i mean using time is a really bad example because you're talking about a, a period where there is no time progressing um so so if that is the case and it's all hypothetical then that would not need a that that would not be contingent on anything it would be a necessary state of affairs how can you have god and the universe both being necessary and the universe yeah. not exactly so if somebody says i believe god is necessary they would then say the universe is contingent but then you could just yeah. ask the person in the, who believes in god well what created god and they would say well god just always existed and then you would say well that's special pleading Okay, no, you're too no, no, smart no. not to get this, Mark. You're too yeah, smart not I, I to think get this. You've, I, no, no, no. What I'm talking about is if you talk to other people, you're talking to, say, an atheist who says the universe <sighs> is necessary, right? Hold on, let me finish. You say the universe is necessary. If that theist says, hey, the universe can't be necessary, only God can be necessary, a necessary being, that is special pleading. However, if that theist says, well, you think the universe is necessary, you've got no evidence for it, but, you know, you can believe that if you want, that's not special pleading because you've separated the categories of necessary and contingent and and the, the atheist has put the universe in that necessary category. The theist yes, in terms of in that necessary... Come can on, I man. attempt to find middle um, ground? Because I'm a great hey, man. I'm not interrupting you. Like, there's got to be a point where I can say it yes, I agree. Seem like and I you can... are interrupting me. All right, I'll shut up right, and let you finish. Fair, but... Both of you guys have been. Uh, I feel like it's been fairly tonight. smooth the last Mark, little bit. You, you just like, kind of got a little really? dapey there. Like, Mark, here, earlier in the debate, this is early in the debate, Ronnie said, Excuse me, can I finish? And then you said, there's one thing I want to say, though, and you spoke. I wouldn't have, okay, like, okay. if I was the debater, I would have said, like, no, 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 hold on. Like, what I, right, right, I, can fair finish, I want to finish. But uh, to be fair, I want to, Ronnie, I do want to, like, I was siding with you, Mark, originally. Uh, Ronnie, I do want to give him just, let's just give him 20, 30 seconds, and then we'll, we'll kick yeah. it over to you. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So uh, uh, what was I saying? An atheist would put uh, the universe in that c category of necessary. A theist would put God in that category of necessary. That is not special pleading. Okay, that's not. Okay, when you, right, what you're doing right now is talking about categorization, but you're losing sight of what the actual discussion is. So what the theist says is that it's impossible for the universe to exist eternally. It was created by God, right? That's what they say. Um, and, and then your some... response or what the atheist response to them typically is, well, that's special pleading because you're saying that it's possible for God to exist eternally but what you're saying is that the universe needs an explanation 
So it, it always comes down to this. I don't want to exhaust this topic anymore because it's actually um, not really getting to the heart of anything. And I don't think anybody listening to this particular segment of the debate is going to be swayed either way, listening to us discuss whether or not something is special pleading. Let's actually get to the meat and the bones of what we're talking about. And that is, how did the universe come about? I am going to repeat myself here that I believe you guys only have two options. The universe existed infinitely into the past, which I have attempted to explain how that's impossible because infinite cannot exist. Um, the infinite cannot exist as, as a state. And since the past already happened, um, it, it cannot be considered infinite. Infinite can only exist as a potential. So as time moves forward, we could say time can progress into the future uh, infinitely, potentially. There's no limit. But in terms of the, the time that has already happened, um, that is finite. So uh, the origins of the universe can't stretch infinitely into the past. And whatever uh, is responsible for, I guess, the Big Bang or the quantum field or whatever, that can't extend infinitely into the past because there is no infinite past to extend into. There has to be a point of beginning. So if there's a point of beginning, which is beyond science, which is beyond natural explanation, I don't have to show you what that is. I don't have to prove to you what that is. I don't have to show you any of its features. We know what it is. It's God. That's the only thing that it can be. Okay, so you sort of devolved into preaching in the back, but basically not all theists would say the universe is not necessary. They may disagree. They may have different opinions on it. It, it depends on the theist, really. They may they may think that God is necessary. They may have different opinions on it. So I wouldn't I wouldn't presume to know. I've never met a everything. theist who says that Mark both theists and the universe Ronnie, is necessary. Chance. Or, well, I mean, unless Mark was already finished, I want to give Mark a chance to finish. <laughs> I was not finished. Um, so not not all theists think all the same. Um, the two options, infinite and into the past, is impossible. As Ronnie said earlier, he doesn't know how to demonstrate this, can't demonstrate this, basically said, I don't know that that is the case, but it is the case. That's completely an unsupported claim, vacuous and empty. Um, the past already happened. That is A theory of time, not B theory of time. He's completely wrong on that and wrong what science says about that. The origin of the universe cannot that extend into the past it's and then he was talking about what's beyond the universe like the cosmos and and what he's failing to understand is that space-time is local to this universe so if he's talking about into the past beyond the universe he is absolutely it, there is no past to extend into. The past is a part of the universe's space-time. When you get outside the universe, there is no past. There is no future because that requires time. So he's basically making a whole bunch of unsupported claims. He's basically said, oh, we know it's God. But what he's not doing is actually providing any evidence whatsoever for God. He's basically making a bold assertion with absolutely vacuous, no evidence, no argumentation, just I don't think it can be anything else. It is an argument from incredulity. His personal incredulity says, I don't believe it can be anything else, which is a logical fallacy, one of the many that he's made tonight. Okay, so my opponent says that uh, the future, the past and the present all exist at once. Um, but then he also claims that um, there was a point where there was no time. How do you reconcile this? Well, we don't exist outside the universe, Ronnie. We, we exist in the local presentation of the universe, which does have space time. Okay. So do you believe that the past extends infinitely or do you believe that it has a point where it stops? I don't know. Oh, you don't know. It's because you no. can't make sense of that is why you say you don't know. It's not that you don't know is you literally can't make sense of it. You can even offer an explanation to how that could make sense because it literally is illogical. Um, I can make sense of it. I can I can look at the two options that you said and make sense of either of them. It is Please attempt to make sense of either one of them. And how it does is something come from nothing or exist eternally? Please make sense of one of them. It is completely understandable by physics how these two options work. Um, it's just that I don't know which one of them is in fact true. So, um, but the, as I said, which one do you think is true? That just because I don't know an answer doesn't mean that you get to say. I that need to know what I'm debating against. Which one do you think is so, true? So that is called God of the Gaps, and I already went over this in my presentation. Another logical, uh, another so you, you don't logical know, fallacy. but yet you want me to describe God. Yet you don't even know. You don't even have an opinion as to how the universe was formed. 
Yeah, the burden of proof is on yeah. you to show that that the um, God actually, in fact, exists. Oh, not for see, me that's to where you're wrong. A God. Uh, just to be sure that we hear each of you one at a time. Okay, so that's where you're wrong, because neither one of us are actually going to be able to prove that, right? Basically, what I, I feel um, is the best job that a theist, a true believer in God can do, is provide a, a situation in which it's 50% logical to believe in God. If we strip away all faith and we just look at the universe from a, a purely logical standpoint, it's you have to make a gut decision one way or the other, because we are left with the problem of, yeah, you know what? I can't actually explain how the universe came about without God, but I can't prove where God is. I don't see him. I can't call him out and you know, tell him to reveal himself. So you're never going to be able to prove either way. So I think it's hilarious that you actually think it's my job to be able to prove to people God. It's my job to be able to prove that atheism doesn't have a reasonable explanation for the universe. You're the atheist. You're the one who's so firm in science, yet you don't. You can't even say what your opinion is, and you can't even explain how either one of those two options, something coming from nothing or something existing eternally, can actually make sense. You just go on about categorization and, and uh, special pleading, but you don't actually get to the to the meat and potatoes of the argument. Okay, and it's so because you, you said, haven't thought about it enough. Or you, sorry, yeah, sorry, no, no, I'll finish there. That was piling on. My bad. Okay, so so you said provide fifty percent logical to believe this, but you provided zero percent evidence. You provided absolutely nothing besides your assertion. So, and plus, if you take into account that God is only one explanation among an infinite amount of other explanations, like magic and like these these um, physical naturalistic theories on the natural literature hypothesis, I should say, um, there, there's zero percent to you know sort of to believe that that God is the the origin of the universe at all. Um, and you're saying make a gut decision. That's a terrible way to find out what is true a gut decision has no rationality no kind of logic it is just your feelings and as you mentioned in your intro your intuition that sort of says that this thing could be uh, true or not true which is a terrible way to go through life um so you also said um um so, so I actually brought up a whole bunch of things that that were because, you know, sort of what we understand about the mind and how can God be a mind without a body. And I also brought up the vastness, emptiness and chaoticness of space. Like, why is it there? If, if a God did, in fact, create it for something, why is it being destroyed so arbitrarily through supernova black holes and other uh, cosmological events? Um, it, it doesn't seem like it's a very efficient um, design or creation, if you will, um, to be able to put into place. So I did bring up a few things that would lead me to believe that God isn't real. You brought up nothing besides your own incredulity. Okay, well, we're, we're not getting into final statements here, so I don't want to get into summarizing everything that we've said before. I like to keep things uh, point by point, if, if, uh, if that's all right with you. Well, so, I, I, um, I just brought up what you said and then okay. added a question on the end of it. I okay, don't see so it's a sign off statement. With uh, with respect to faith, um, I, I find it hilarious that you would think most theists or deists or believers in God think that um, there is ultimate proof of God, and that's what we should be using. Um, in order to justify our beliefs. Faith is very important. We are tested based on, our, based on our faith in all religions. If God wanted it to be as simple as us just knowing, he would come down from the sky every single day. So all, all believers in God understand that a certain element of faith is required in order to believe in God. However, our faith should not defy our logic. My understanding of the universe and my faith are not at odds with each other. There is nothing about science or about the universe and, and what happens within the universe um, that that is uh, running opposed or in contradiction to my belief in God. I guess the only point, the only point is when we get beyond the universe, because universal natural explanations cannot explain how the universe got here. We need something beyond that. So that's, that's my core reasoning for believing in God. And I think anybody who believes in God from a non-religious or non-cultural standpoint that's why they believe in God. They've thought about something from nothing. They've thought about infinite 
past existence. And they realize it doesn't make sense. It doesn't satisfy them. And yes, although we can't be sure that God exists from, a, you know, a tangible material, uh, prove it in court type of, of, of standpoint, um, there are, I guess, signs in the universe that point to his direction, like the fine tuning. Um, we didn't really get into fine tuning at all. Perhaps that's something that we could get into, um, but I don't want to just jump ahead into that. If you have something to respond to what I just said, um, go for it. Yeah, that's a lot of subjects you brought up there. Um, so I never, I never mentioned faith. I'm not sure why you brought it up, but you know, I'll sort of say. No, you just faith. laughed at it. You said you shouldn't require faith, but all believers in God do. I, I, so I it never, shouldn't be something never, that you find funny. Yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie. Please have some decorum and control. Oh, my God, yourself. dude, don't be a baby. When I say something quickly, just go on All with right, what you're gentlemen. saying. I'm not going to hijack, man. Just relax. Wow. Uh, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. Um, I never mentioned faith at all. I never brought up the word. I'm not sure why you're pivoting to it. I'm happy to talk about faith, but it's not a very good way to assess the, the reality either. Um, ultimate proof of God, I never said that. So nice straw man, but that's not something I said. I said I required sufficient evidence, not ultimate proof. So that's just a non, non-statement non really. Um, naturalistic explanations cannot solve the origin of the universe is what you said. And um, the problem is... Is that Ronnie doesn't know that we can't solve it in the future. It's just that we don't know it now. He's basically making this assertion that he knows the limits of science going into the future. And I'll, I'll frame a question around that. Um, you also said that people don't get proper satisfaction out of that. It doesn't matter what people get satisfaction out of. Something is either true or not true. It may be very dissatisfactory that you can make nuclear weapons, but that doesn't make it untrue. Um, that has nothing to do with the, the the truth of whether the God created the universe or not. Nothing to do with it. I have no idea why you brought it up. Um, and the fine-tuning album, I'm more than happy to discuss that one. But I would like to ask, how do you know that science won't have a demonstrable answer like we have for every other single phenomenon in the past that we have determined that has naturalistic causes? Quite simple. Uh, the the brilliant minds and philosophers that pondered this uh, problem, uh, they were just as close to uh, answering these questions as we are. Science does nothing to get us any closer to how does something come from nothing. Uh, Aristotle and the boys, Plato, all the ancient philosophers, they didn't need to have the same tools that we have today in order to think about these things. Anybody um, from any time frame, if they have a you know a smart enough brain, they can think about you know how did all of this come about. Well, everything needs a, an explanation. This comes from that. This comes from that. Well, we can't just follow that infinitely. Somehow that doesn't make sense. Like infinite regression on an intuitive level doesn't make sense, right? So people uh, came about, I guess, these dilemmas uh, long before we had all of these scientific breakthroughs. So it's not a, a God of the gaps problem. Um, I, I don't really think intelligent people back in the day, even Newton and... and, and uh, Galileo. They didn't actually believe God was holding up the planets. They just talked about, you know, uh, God doing that in a poetic way, like Einstein would say, uh, God rolling the dice and, and things like that. They didn't actually believe, you know, that God's up there pulling levers, making sure the universe stays uh, in place. They they just believe that at the core level of, of creation lies a God. And so um, the discover like scientific discoveries uh, basically reveal God's working. Um, they don't disprove God, right? Because it's not like at, at a fundamental level, people are just like, oh, why is there sand? God must have done it. Why is there water? God must have done it. No, that, that, that those are stupid interpretations of the universe. Uh, it, the original people who are who are pondering these things were just asking, you know, metaphysical questions. Why is there a universe instead of there not being a universe? Um, how can something come from nothing or exist infinitely into the past? And it's always been divided on two lines. Some people say, well, you know what? I just believe there was something or we'll find something in the future that just always existed and science will eventually explain it. And then you have people on the other side who say, no, science can't explain it. Um, it's beyond science. You need to have faith in God. And we've been in that same position for I don't know how long. Do you disagree with that? Um, I don't. I don't. I think that our, our scientific knowledge has explained things that people have said would never be explained. Um, people would, would, would say that, that certain things in the evolutionary uh, model would never be explained, and they have been. Um, things things like uh, the formation of the eyeball and stuff like that, people said they'd never be able to explain. Or the autoimmune system for mammals, people said you'd never be able to explain that. It has to be God. And we've explained it. We've actually come up with it. And that was a lot you went through. That was incredibly a lot that you went through. Um, 
now we already agreed and, and we've already discussed that something come from nothing nothing is a quantum field so this whole idea that your intuition says that something can't come from a quantum field is demonstrably wrong um no no no, no so no, no. you said that brilliant minds and philosophers um sort of have been working on this and our knowledge has progressed the scope of the problem we are looking at with the formation of the universe is so such a large problem and so so vast but you're you're without merit and without claim saying oh you're never going to solve that problem you never will and and lots of people have said that in the past and every single one has been wrong about that um when you said einstein does you know god doesn't roll dice kind of he was talking simply of the laws of physics didn't believe in a god and and anyway what people historically believe in has nothing to do with it so you're bringing up philosophers that believed in god and this person that believes in god it, it's just an appeal to authority it's got there's no reason why what people believed in the past got anything to do with what is accurately true. Now, you said science doesn't disprove a god, but science doesn't disprove unicorns either. There's a lot that science doesn't disprove, and the burden of proof is on you to prove the thing that you claim is true. And, and you can say, hey, that's not my burden all you want. But until you do, it is God of the gaps. You can claim it's not all you want, but that's exactly what it is. You are using an argument saying that if we can't prove what it is, you get to insert God. And that is not the case because there are millions of things that could be inserted instead of God with just as little justification as you're using now. Now, because you brought up faith again, I'm, I'm going to touch on faith and whether that's a reliable method in which to sure evaluate reality. a little bit reality. over a minute, but we'll let you keep going, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah dude, I just, I just, it's just I'll get impossible to, my question. to have. I'll get to my question. Question. Um, so what is what could you not believe on faith? Name something you couldn't believe on faith. Um, I don't know. Who, who's who's going to win a football game? You couldn't have faith? Oh, something that you – oh, you're saying that it's impossible to have faith. I thought you were saying that you could believe in without faith, but you're saying that you could believe in um, – uh, and not have faith in is that what you're something saying? something it is impossible to believe when you're using faith as a metric something you say hey i can't use faith to justify that i'm having a really difficult uh, time uh, yeah, understanding what you're asking me well i mean i put it as simply as i can so if i'm using faith as my criteria for believing something what is something anything at all that i could not take faith and say i have faith that that is true i'm not sure I would put it to you, nothing. You could literally, there is nothing you could not believe in on faith. I could believe that anything on faith. Oh, okay. I see what, I see what you're saying right now. No, no. <laughs> so you, you, you want to pin, it's funny. You really want to uh, pinpoint right now the, the relevance of faith or the importance of faith? You brought it up. But, well, it's one of many things that I brought up. So I just find it interesting. That yeah. It, yeah. You okay. did fish gallop. I agree. Yeah, so I, I don't know if this is necessary. I'll just be really quick then. All I meant to say is that um, when I mentioned faith, how you have to plug in faith at a certain level, you went <laughs> and you laughed as if you didn't already know that all theists and deists require faith in their belief system. So it shouldn't have been a, sm a smug little laugh from you. It should have been like, yes, this is reasonable. This is very consistent coming from a deist. That's all I meant by that. So I don't want to get into the, the importance of faith right now beyond that, that it, it is obvious to assume that any deist or theist is going to um, recognize that faith, that faith on some level is required in order to believe in God, because God doesn't just want to uh, reveal himself every day in like a, a like a physical way to remove all faith. No, faith has to be required. He does reveal himself to us, but in a way that faith is still part of the equation. So can we just put that to rest or do you have something to respond to that? Yeah, yeah, I have something to oh respond. You're, you're, mis you're miscoloring my my responses as a smug little laugh kind of thing. That That is not what is going through my mind and I'd advise you to sort of stop trying to mind read what I actually think and then insert your perception of it. Because what I find as... Um, uh, brings a smile to my face is because I've heard this argument before, like multiple, like so many times. And, and it always comes down to there is nothing you can't believe in faith. So as a consequence, faith as a metric for believing things is absolutely useless. Uh, sure. I, I, whatever. Okay. I, I don't, I don't want to beat a, a dead horse. You can have the final words, word, word on that one. So do you want to talk about uh, fine tuning? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so do you agree that um, multiverse is the only way to dismiss fine-tuning, or do you think there's another way um, to dismiss fine-tuning? 
Yeah, so there's really two two major ways to dismiss fine tuning. The first one is, of course, multiverse, and we, we do have maths in sort of um, um, M theory that suggests that that could be very possible. Um, the mathematical equations do line up, but I, I don't think it's been proven yet. I just make that clear because I'm not saying that I definitely believe that is true. But the other way is that um, the the universe is deterministic, and this is the only way the universe could have formed. Right. So if you think about it and you um, roll a pebble down a hill, um, it seems random. It seems like it's a random thing, but there's only one way that pebble will go determined by the um, physics that actually make it roll down the hill. If the physics are exactly the same, it will always come out the same. Now, um, it may be that the only way a universe can form is under certain conditions and therefore those conditions were met and the universe formed. But it may be the case that in the origin of the universe, those are the only physics that emerged, right? Does that make sense? That those were determined by physics ahead of time? No, because it just begs the question, what determines the physics? Why are the physics even there? Yeah. Right. So properties of the cosmos around it. Okay, but um, those properties could amalgamate, they can form, they can express themselves in so many different ways can that, they? of course they can. Gravity can be set. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming that you've gone through this before, the, the, the list of, you know, fine-tuning parameters but um, in case you haven't, I do have them up here. Like we have the gravitational force constant. Uh, uh, we have the electromagnetic force, uh, strong nuclear force, the weak um, cosmological constant, uh, constant uh, the initial conditions, the brute facts. I mean, I don't want to go through them all because it takes a long time and it could it could just make for a boring conversation. So I assume that you just agree, okay, there are some fine-tuned features to the universe. Um, and yeah, we could have had the fundamental forces be set to freaking anything. Why are they set the way that they are? Um, well, multiverse theory can explain this. If there's a quadrillion, bazillion, infinite amount of, of universes, then it makes sense as to why we would have one that is perfectly tuned. But without multiverse theory, how do you possibly explain why the fundamental forces are set the way that they are? Well, multiverse theory is there for a reason. Um, okay, so that's literally the only thing then, right? Um, that's the that's, only way to get away from fine tuning. What I said, and if I could just finish. Um, so you basically went on to say that gravity in the cosmos, that gravity is in our local universe. When we know nothing about the greater cosmos around the universe, nobody's ever been able to breach that uh, origin point of the universe to see None if of there that is even a matters. cosmos, much less what the properties of it are. Um, I'm just saying it is possible that well, the outcome of the cos... I'm telling you, Ronnie, to be hold on. I just want to hear Mark finish. Yeah, so, so it could be that the properties um, would lead to this universe under all conditions, all possible worlds that would lead there. Um, by possible worlds, I mean the philosophical idea of, you know, sort of multiple different probabilities. Um, but the fact that multiverse does account for this is the other side of the coin. It's basically something that you've already said multiverse accounts for it. So why go beyond that? First of all, I need to know what exactly that I'm arguing against, right? If somebody were, if you're to, debate, uh, to, to be debating a uh, Christian who pivots back and forth between Hinduism and Islam, it would be very difficult for you and it wouldn't be fair for you. Um, so if you pivot back and forth between different possibilities, if you don't even believe in, in one, um, it, it makes it difficult for me. So I'm assuming why you believe the universe is fine-tuned is because we live, live in a multiverse, is am I correct? Do you believe we live in a multiverse? Okay, so if you're unclear about the topic of the debate, the debate is: Did God create the universe? That is the topic. Why are of you the pivoting? Debate. So um, I'm just asking you: Do you believe in multiverse or not? Finish. He's, but so, he's not even answering my question, James. I'm asking you: Do you believe in multiverse? Than, do you think we live in one? Yes respond. or no? It's not that you don't have to do this, Mark. Just <laughs> answer the question. They, a person doesn't have to if they don't want to respond yes or no. Like I do want to give them a chance to say where they're coming from. So if you, like for example, a person obviously could let's say, like, let's see I where he's coming know. from then, James. Let's let's see it. Okay, so I'm actually addressing where you said when a person goes into debate, they'll be arguing one subject. So I'm reminding you that the subject is actually God 
did God create the universe, not not what is the um, scientific explanation for the creation of the universe. I'll just remind you of that. Um, so um, you're basically saying you have to believe in one. No, I don't. I can say I don't know which one of these is true. I don't know if there's another explanation I may be unaware of. As I said, I'm not a physicist. So the, the idea that I have to believe in one for it to be true is complete nonsense. Something could be true that I don't believe in. Um, so I, it makes no difference to whether it's true or not, but you are saying, you are claiming with no evidence that is necessarily the case that it can't be multiverse and it can't be the other explanation I've posited. So I've never said you that. Have to, you have to demonstrate that. First of all, I never, I never said that. Okay, I'm, so I'm just you... trying to establish where you stand, and I feel like you're like a pit bull your natural inclination is to just fight and attack as to, as opposed to just answering a question honestly and moving forward in a bit more of a conversation uh, format as opposed to a, a, a dog fight. So when I ask you, do you believe in multiverse? Well, it doesn't matter what I believe in. It could be this, it could be that, blah, 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 blah. And you don't actually want to have a conversation. What is it that Mark believes? And if you don't actually believe in anything, you, you don't actually have uh, your own personal thought as to why the universe is is finely tuned, um, it does matter in the context of a debate because you can bring up all these different uh, 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 potentials or, or possibilities that you don't necessarily even favor. So it does make it difficult. Does it make it impossible to have the debate? No. But I think you should um, answer the question honestly. Um, do you believe in the multiverse theory? I think that is what you believe in. And it, it helps for the debate. So that's that's frustrating. Um, you attempted to explain how there could be an explanation for fine tuning without a multiverse. And if I'm getting you clear, um, you said that there could be um, conditions or parameters outside of our universe, which inevitably would lead to the fine tuning of our universe, correct? Yeah, I'll just address um, a couple of the things that you said. Um, so it's going into the past, man. <laughs> well, the, the problem is, Ronnie, that you're sort of kish galloping along subjects and then want to ask a question and leave those things behind, like just say, hey, just let me say this. I think we're both doing that, to be fair. Not address it. Well, no, I'm talking about the things that you bring up and you're well, more than welcome to talk about the things that I bring up. It's just that you seem to want to bring up things, move onwards and not let me address them, which is gish galloping. Um, you know, that is what it is. So you said, I don't believe in anything. Yeah, I do. The Why is the universe finally tuned? I don't know. That's the whole point. And I'm trying to be clear in my answer. But what you're doing is you're bringing up a possibility of God and saying, I believe this possibility is true prove me otherwise i bring up alternate possibilities and you say unless you believe them they can't be considered possibilities which is nonsensical it's a nonsense um whether or not i believe in these possibilities doesn't exclude them from being possibilities you're trying to say and you have said multiple times the only possibility is god and when i bring up other possibilities and say how do you disprove these ones you say you've got to believe in them or else they're, they're not they're not a possibility it, it's absurd so, no, you just jumbled um, a bunch of so things. So you also said that that for the multiverse, I believe in that. No, I'm reserving judgment because that is not scientific theory. We think there's a multiverse, or the scientists working on M theory think there is a multiverse because of the math and the way that it is working. It seems to lead to a multiverse, but that hasn't been sufficient evidence to demonstrate that that is in fact the case do i believe that is the most likely explanation yes do i believe it to be true i don't know okay so at, at least we got a, a, a decent response that would have been great if you're like yeah i believe multiverse is most likely i'm not 100 percent sure if it's if it's true um so there's I, I want to respond to things that you just said but we got to move forward with the conversation so uh, keeping with with multiverse um you would say that that is the most likely scenario that we're living in um basically an infinite amount of of universes 
or there Probably. sorry there exists an, essentially an infinite amount of universes I, I i would think i mean that there are multiple different physicists with multiple different ideas so i kind of reserve judgment until there is a scientific consensus and enough evidence to determine one is actually the case i would tentatively say hey there's maths pointing at a multiverse but you know i can't even understand the math so how would i say i believe this to be true um when even scientists don't agree that it's true um i think that you are expecting a whole load of stuff from me that I, i'm not i'm not comfortable with saying hey this is what i absolutely believe i reserve judgment and that's the difference and i think you should reserve judgment about god because there's been no evidence this debate whatsoever well, there's no, I, I don't think you would agree that there's ever been any evidence put forth by a deist or a theist that God exists, right? Um, it, it's, it's. Sure, there has. You think deists and, and theists have put forth evidence that God exists? Can you give me an example? Yeah. Sure, give me well, an example. I mean, most Christian theists will, will point to the Bible. Oh my God. So, no evidence that you actually take as, as like legitimate evidence. I do take that as evidence. I just don't think it's very compelling evidence. Okay, Look, so compelling evidence. evidence. Do you think there's been any compelling evidence put forth by a Christian or a theist? So you'd probably say no, No, right? I don't. No. Okay, don't. so but, when but you say, like, that's, during that's this the, debate, I've heard nothing, blah, blah, blah. So no, 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 I just, but the to me, theories. those are like little digs and insults. I'm not going to say that to an atheist because well, no, no, I no, realize no. there are millions of you. Um, there, you know, it's, it, I respect your position because I can't prove it wrong and you can't prove my position wrong. We can only offer, um, basically insight and arguments as to why, which side may be more likely. So I think I'm, I'm providing argumentation to, to suggest that God is more likely to have created the universe than to not have. And you think that you're providing more evidence and argumentation that there is no God, but neither one of us can actually sit here look each other in the eye and say that we're attempting to prove God or disprove God because neither one of us can do that. Yeah, but the, the difference here is that somebody using the Bible, I would say they presented poor, poor evidence. And I want to clarify that when I say you have presented no evidence, like not even poor evidence. You've, you've presented like sort of logically fallacious arguments, basically. You haven't presented any evidence whatsoever. I don't want to I want to bring up a, a evidence, scenario. In fact, if, no evidence. And, and when know. you're talking about whether somebody has or has not proved God, when when the question is, has it was the universe created by a god you're sort of trying to demonstrate that it was a god as i said earlier if you basically claim it's a god and you present no evidence whatsoever and logically fallacious arguments then it is completely reasonable and rational to dismiss that claim as an unwarranted baseless claim okay so we're, we're we are getting into fine-tuning which you can't possibly argue isn't a form of evidence maybe you'll say that it isn't compelling evidence but i mean so many uh people have built their careers off of putting forth intelligent design and fine-tuning that if you're going to take the bible as a form of evidence i think it's pretty ridiculous that you wouldn't take fine-tuning so we're literally getting into that evidence however i mm -hmm. want to remind people again that if there's only two possibilities, if there's only two potential answers to a question, and I can prove that one of them is false by process of elimination, the other one has to be true. So if if there's uh, two doors and behind one of those doors, um, we know for sure lies the answer. So we'll put a big golden A. There's a big golden A behind door number one and, go and door number two. If I can open door number one and say, hey, big golden A isn't here, then we have to assume we know it's reasonable to believe i guess we won't know it because we can't unless we open the door but it is reasonable to believe that the a is behind door number two so you may not uh respect that line of of thinking you may not uh think that that is a form of evidence but most people do if if there's only two explanations two possible explanations and the person can show that one of those explanations isn't true, the other one has to be true. So now you're gonna argue that there's more than just two explanations. And we're gonna go back to whether or not um, it comes down to whether or not uh, the universe is either created by God or it wasn't created by God. I hope we don't loop back to that, but I have a feeling that th that's what you're gonna do to get out of this whole, there's only two possible explanations. What I've gotta do is I've gotta mention, we're going to go into the Q&A soon. So I wanna give you gentlemen okay. time to draw together the threads from this debate. What I'll do is maybe about two minutes, each of you. We'll start with Mark, we'll finish with Ronnie, and then we'll go into the Q&A. Or in fact, I think we started with Ronnie. So why don't we do, we'll give Mark a chance, a quick response to that last question you asked Ronnie. 
And then right after that, Ronnie will give you your two-minute closing, followed by Mark's two-minute closing before we go into Q&A. Yeah, so, so the whole idea of the two doors is the false dichotomy that Ronnie brought up earlier. Um, he hasn't actually demonstrated that it isn't um, possible for a universe to be naturalistically formed. He's just asserted it and said because his intuition believes it, um, that that that's enough for him. And that that is a uh, argument from incredulity. Your intuition isn't a good way to determine whether something is um, ontologically true or false. Um, it's just a terrible way to do that. And, and like I talked earlier about his methodology, his methodology is if it's intuition is terrible. Um, and so you respect you don't respect that way of thinking. No, it's irrational. I'm, I'm really sorry, but there's no other word for it. It's unreasonable and irrational. That's all it is. Um, most people do think think this way regardless that's a you're really racking up the fallacies that's sort of an appeal to popularity because most people think like i do it must be true which is not the case that's just an appeal to the popular idea which um you know if you haven't been paying attention the popular idea hasn't always been the right one it's not reliable and that's the whole point um and you know that's what that's all i'll say on that um, and i'll let ronnie do his wrap up all right. Well, first, I want to say um, this has been the second debate that I've had on this channel, and uh, I've enjoyed both of these debates. However, um, it seems like we have a really hard time uh, sticking to one topic, fleshing it out, and then moving on. It seems like there, it's bounce, it bounces back and forth. And I notice a similarity between both you and T-Jump. You guys get really hostile when I suggest that science cannot explain how the universe came to be you immediately want to jump and say you prove to me god show me god well i mean the the burden of proof is is on you here and as, same thing with t jump same thing with you when i when i started laying out that this is my uh, uh line of thinking you know if, if i'm a lawyer or, or whatever this is how i'm going about it i'm going to prove that option a is not an option therefore it has to be option b my strategy is not to prove that option B is correct, but to prove that option A is is incorrect. It has no way of being true. This really pisses off the atheists because they know that this is a frustrating uh, point for them as well. They can't in their brains uh, wrap their mind around how something can come from nothing or exist eternally forever. They know it doesn't make sense. So they just avoid it completely. And they just say, well, I, I, I also know there's no God. So you know what? I, I'm just going to continue to be an atheist. But they realize that there is this big problem uh, at, the, at the foundation of atheism, which is um, the inability to explain, again, how something can come from nothing or explain eternally into the past. They, they want to just stray away from that and go on the attack. So uh, during this debate, um, I, I have not heard anything from Mark to explain um, reasonably how something can exist can exist forever. Um, he talks about he basically agreed that um, infinity can only yep infinity can only um, exist as a potential it can exist as a state but yet he also wants to believe that something can exist forever or e exist eternally into the past this is contradiction this is not consistent so in terms of who's being more consistent and who's being more self contradictive um, I think it's 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 fairly obvious and I'll leave it at that. We'll go into the Q&A. want to say, folks, if you happen to have a question, we've don't got a, a shorter... Hmm? Don't, don't I get a wrap-up? Oh, you're right. No, you Sorry did your wrap-up. You do. Well, what we said is, for the last question that you asked, I said I'd give Mark a chance to respond. And then I said I'd give you, Ronnie, a, col a closing as well as Mark then. And so, because we had you start, Ronnie. So, I want to mention, folks, if you happen to have a question for the Q&A, do fire that into the old live chat. And we're going to go into that last two-minute closing from Mark floor is all yours. Yeah, so uh, we're not getting aggressive and, and Ronnie's sort of doing another mind reading episode where he thinks he knows what we're thinking or what we're doing. Um, it's basically that Ronnie's sort of violating logical fallacies that are evident to most philosophers and, and really any rational thinking people. Um, it sort of says that science can't demonstrate the origin of the universe. He's basically saying that science can't demonstrate in the future. We know that this, this is not the case and Ronnie has no evidence to back this up. He's just claiming it in a vacuum. Um, so he keeps saying something came from nothing. You can't explain that but when nothing is a quantum vacuum we can explain that and that's the thing he's misrepresenting and straw manning what the actual something from nothing is which was only said by Lawrence Krauss and only a title for his book because he wanted to sell books um, and he basically we've got a guy who will happily sit down and say yes 
I do the logical fallacy of special pleading and I believe I'm entitled to do so. I mean, what a sad state of affairs we have here, ladies and gentlemen, where a man can basically say, I'm happy to do special pleading, even though if you do special pleading, you can do special pleading for anything. I can do it for unicorns. I can do it for magic. I can do it for gremlins and I can do it for anything. It's 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 irrational, illogical thinking that this, this person is engaged in. Um, all throughout this, he's made logical fallacies. And I might need to remind you, he's made this claim that God did create the universe and not justified it in any way whatsoever. He's just basically said, I don't think it can be any other explanation. Therefore, it has to be God. I've already outlined all of this in my introduction. That is God of the gaps. Or actually, that one's an argument from incredulity, but basically saying, well, you don't know, science doesn't know, therefore God is a God of the gaps. And he's probably, you know, proud to do that logical fallacy as well. Um, so, you know, we've got logical fallacy after logical fallacy, misrepresentation, a terrible arguments, no evidence whatsoever, just an assertion that is hollow, empty, baseless, nothing to back it up, just shifting the burden of proof to say, prove my God is not there. I don't have to. You have to prove it is actually the creator of the universe, not the other way around. Thank you. We're going to start with the Q&A and want to remind you folks, our guests are linked in the description. If you'd like to hear more from them, you certainly can. This one coming in from Dave Gar says, in your best Aussie accent, please say, good day, Mark. Oh, yes. And good day, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark. It was O'Flamio says, mate. if you define nothing as the object that doesn't exist that we do science on, there can still be nothing, and there is no dependency on God, parentheses, Yahweh. Any thoughts on that, Ronnie? Uh, not in particular, but I do want to say that uh, special pleading, as defi it's defined as an informal fallacy where in one cites something as an exception to a general universal principle without justifying the, the special exception. I have justified it. What better justification could there be than to say it's God? He is exempt from the same rules. I mean, I I don't know what else to say here, guys. What was it, just so, so I can remember, because it might come up during the Q&A, what was the rule in particular that you mentioned that you had said God would be, that God is exempt from? Because I have a feeling this is in the Q&A coming yeah, up. Yeah, he, he does not need to have a cause. Everything else needs to have a cause, but God does not. He's beyond cause. He's also beyond time, and everything else is within time. So I guess those would be the two main rules, but there's probably more, but those are really what I'm focusing on. Is the cosmos within time? Pardon me? Is the cosmos within time? It's so yes. hard to hear you. It's, it, it's yeah, just, you backed up okay. there. For the audience. To yeah. Hear it. Yeah, sorry, that's just special pleading. I'm sorry. It just it just is. There's I, no justification. I don't think I don't know if the audience heard you, Mark. It was the the microphone was. So oh, far does away. the cosmos does the cosmos exist uh, exist in time? And the cosmos is outside the universe. Space time is part of the local presentation of the universe. It's impossible for it to be within time. It makes no well, sense. Well, I mean, we're getting into semantics and and shit like that, right? I mean, very specific definitions. Um, what I'm saying is, God is beyond the universe. Everything else is essentially within it. He's the only thing that's allowed to have exception to the rule. And if he didn't, he wouldn't be God. We couldn't define this thing as God if it wasn't that way. So I'm definitely meeting the criteria of justification. And uh, yeah, so when I say it's a, it's a form of special pleading, I'm trying to be uh, you know, very generous. I'm trying to say, I get where you're coming from here. You're, you're, you're saying that God is free from these rules that you're attaching to everything else. But then I'm coming back with saying that, yes, theists and deists should be honest and say we are. Otherwise, it wouldn't be God. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Cameron Hall says, Ronnie, if the universe was really fine-tuned for life, wouldn't it look very different? Why can humans only live on a minuscule fraction of our planet? Well, when we talk about tuned for life, we're talking about tuned so that life could even exist potentially, it, not just for it to be prevalent everywhere. But if you were to change, if you were to tweak the settings of the universe in just a small way, we're talking about the universe just flying away uh, or collapsing in, in on itself. We're talking about planets never even forming. We're talking about DNA never even having a chance to form. I believe like the, the, the mass of protons in relation to um, electrons, if they were any different, DNA wouldn't be able to form. So, um, yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. Gotcha. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Who's rich 
Purnell says, love the channel, and big thanks to both of the debaters, Mark and Ronnie. He said, for Mark, what is your... By the way, our guests are linked in the description, folks. If you haven't already, this is a great opportunity. You can open multiple windows. You can click on their links right now, and that includes if you're listening via the podcast. We put Mark's and Ronnie's podcast, or I should say link in the description box for this podcast episode as well. So if you're listening via the podcast, check them out there too. This one from Who's Rich Pernal, as I said, says, For Mark, what is your approach to epistemology, and what do you think directs the human intellect? Um, what is my approach to epistemology? Um, well, epistemology is sort of knowledge and belief. So I think I take an evidentiary basis. I mean, arguments are good, but unless you can sort of back up the premises of the arguments, um, you're really dealing with ifs in, in that case. So um, I would probably adhere to methodological naturalism um, for the most part. Um, but I don't rule out um, a supernatural basis, even though methodological naturalism sort of prevents it being used as a um, method of, of finding out what is true and what is not. Sorry, what was the second part of that question? No problem. They said, and what do you think directs the human intellect? I'm what do I think? I think the brain directs the human intellect. I think that that um, sort of consciousness in the mind, um, brain states are, are responsible for that. Um, and I use my split brain um, um, evidence to show that the brain, when split, you know, two consciousnesses arise. And in fact, two intellects arise. Um, you, uh, like this split brain, brain patient, it split down the um, cor uh, corpus colsim down the middle. Um, one side was actually a theist. One side was a atheist. Um, when it can run, when he wrote in both hands, it, it shows each personality as it's but fascinating stuff. I could talk for it ages, but I think that answers your question. You got it, and thank you very much for this question coming in from. Do appreciate it. Ferron Salas, good to see you. Says Ronnie, why insist on using a term like supernatural when we haven't substantiated that supernatural causes or beings exist? Well, what I'm suggesting, what I'm arguing is that natural causes, the natural universe, what we see within nature can't explain the origins of everything. So therefore, we need a supernatural, something that's beyond nature in order to explain this. If if the thing was within nature, then it itself would require an explanation and then whatever is responsible for that thing would require an explanation. And we just keep going infinitely into the past. So the only way to escape this problem, believe me, I used to be an atheist too. Um, the only way to escape this problem is to say that, you know what, the only thing beyond logic, the only thing beyond this universe that can possibly exist is God. So it's it's just more likely that God did it than, well, I, I it's just the um. Who is Rich Purnell strikes again, says for both parties, from an evolutionary perspective, namely bottom up, how would you, how would man begin to conceive of a top down understanding of the universe? Um, um, do you want well, to take that first, Ronnie? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you, you just, uh, ultimate knowledge, beauty, etc. exists. Um, in some sort of concentrated form and then expresses itself and in, in various ways when divided. I mean, you could say this is a poetic way of describing it or whatever. Um, but, but um, yeah, essentially uh, knowledge, intelligence, beauty is, is uh, the starting point. And we have a breakup of that as opposed to just random and chaos being the starting point and, and beauty and uh, intelligence and math and whatever emerging out of it. Um, I'll just sort of describe what top uh, uh, top down and bottom up basically are. So bottom up is evolution. Basically, you have multiple systems that form together. Emergent properties evolve and emergent things evolve out of it. Top down is that it's designed and it's basically designed downwards to make sense and fit um, because all of those different parts and systems are designed to work together. So um, I think that as a bottom up, we sort of... Um, 
I'm not sure how we could determine that the universe, even as a bottom-up evolutionary process, we could determine that the universe was done in a top-down way. It would have those elements of designed systems that are integrated to work together. Um, it would have a system of order to it that currently the universe does not have. Um, as I said, it might have a stable vacuum, for instance, that seems to suggest that, it, that it's sort of bottom-up. Um, but it's, it's incredibly difficult to tell because um, if you want to posit a God, you could say, hey, God made it to look like that. And then you're sort of going, well, you know, how would we tell the difference? It, it's, it's sort of, it doesn't appear to be top down design, but how would we tell us bottom up? But by the way that the systems interact with one another. You got it. Thank you very much for this question from Leo Whitmer says, Ronnie, how can a God that has no beginning and that came from nothing makes sense. Didn't you say those two things were impossible earlier in the debate? Yeah, this is, um, I don't mean to be insulting to the person, but they, they either haven't thought hard enough about this or they're um, not that smart. Um, so I, I'm literally saying that this is a problem science and atheism has, uh, but God is free from this problem. I understand what the person's saying. It's not like I'm sitting here not realizing that I'm giving this form of, of special pleading for God that I'm not assigning to the rest of the universe. All theists and deists are completely aware of this because we all say, where did the universe come from? Came from God. Where did God come from then? We say God always existed. It, it's, it's not like we're uh, unaware of the fact that these things don't match up, okay? That we're saying, you know, one has this special... Um, I, I mean, it's God. I, I find it hilarious that atheists literally think they're making a point when they say to us, well, w w why is it that God can always exist, but the universe can't? Because the universe is, requires an explanation. It's part of the natural realm. And if all you're using is science to explain it and science can't explain it, then it requires something beyond. So for atheists continuing to make that point of, oh, well, where did God come from then? I mean, it's just it's, it's pretty juvenile. This one coming in from, do appreciate it, Samir Varsane says, if you discover a new island and in it you find log cabins, would you conclude you discovered wild houses? If not, why deny a creator of infinitely more complex things? Um, because That's me, right? I think so. Yeah, so complexity isn't a hallmark of design. Um, we we know that there are complex things that that are not designed, like weather patterns, for instance. They they are chaotic elements. Chaotic elements do have a sense of order underlying them, as per chaos theory. So the weather falls into ordered patterns, but still is a chaotic system. Um, so there's no reason to think that the disorder of the universe is in some way designed to be like that. Um, there there is order that arises from the physics like when the planets line up and things like that but that doesn't mean that 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 spontaneous synchronization of elements of the system has been designed to work like that it's just that chaotic patterns fall into order um that's a really bad analogy saying there's a cabin in the woods kind of thing made of wood so why wouldn't you consider that design i would say hey there's a dam across the river a bundle of sticks is that design did beavers design that or was it just a natural occurrence? Until you go and get, like, bind the beavers, you won't know. You won't know if those sticks piled up or whether it was actually a creature that did it. You got it. Thank you very much for this question. Beamsy says, for Ronnie, have you ever talked to a scientist as regarding what you call nothing is not nothing and you keep misrepresenting nothing? What the Big Bang is. I'm well, this, sure. this is another one where um, they're talking underneath me. They think that I don't realize that nothing actually um, has a weight to it. And we can measure this nothingness. I know all about Krauss and, and his nothingness. And I know that that was just a title used to sell books. I think it's 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 quite hilarious um, that, he, that he would use that title because it satisfies the low IQ atheist that believes, um, you know, something can actually come from nothing. And Krauss proved it. Um, and, and it also draws in the higher IQ atheist who really wants to know more about what this nothingness is. So what he talked, what Krauss means by the, the nothingness, it's basically just a quantum field. So this, this, this quantum field existed and it created the universe. And this quantum field has features to it. It, it even has a, a mass. 
So then it just begs the question, where did the quantum field come from? And this is, I want to say this because this is addressed so many people in the chat. They say, Ronnie doesn't know what created the universe. And, he, you know, scientists don't know. But what he doesn't accept is that science may one day figure out what created the universe. Here's the problem. Science is always going to be in the same situation it's in right now. Say we find something that that's responsible for the, the formation of the quantum field. We're going to be in the same position because we'll just ask, well, where did that come from? And there's going to be two options. It either always existed or it has an explanation. If it has an explanation, we're now regressing infinitely into the past. Because again, you're always going to have those two options, no matter what science discovers, what created it. And if nothing created it, it existed forever. So it, it, it doesn't matter what scientific revelations come, come about. Um, it doesn't matter that science doesn't know it now. Science will never be able to answer the question, what was the original thing that created the universe and how did it get there? It's, science is literally incapable of answering that question. This one coming in from... Um, sorry, James, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to be fair to the person asking the question. They actually asked if you talked to a scientist. You didn't actually answer the question. Okay, um, I've talked to scientists online, like um, people who you would consider to be scientists, whether they're biologists, physicists, etc. But I'm trying to think of right now in my personal life. Um, who, uh, no, no, I haven't. To be really specific, they asked if you uh, talked to scientists about the definition of nothing. And I, I don't know if they mean whether or not Lawrence Krauss's definition is correct or not, or if they mean your, well, they asked whether or not yours is, but I'm trying to think. Yes, I've talked to scientists answer. online about this. I have not talked to a scientist in person about that specific question. You got it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Dal Happy DA says, answer your emails, James. Forgive me for that. Uh, please do ping it. If you just ping me to the top, I'll check that email. Clarence Tompkins says, if time started at the, B the quote unquote Big Bang, how is it illogical to think the singularity existed infinitely since the singularity is beyond quote unquote the universe so can you repeat that he said if time started it's, at the big yeah. bang how is it illogical to think that the singularity existed infinitely since the singularity is beyond the universe the the singularity what would they be saying would be the the quantum field then I'm not sure what the... I, I, or are they talking about the moment uh, w in which everything was kind of one uh, as the Big Bang? Because it, it's a really kind of wacky world when we go before the point of, of the Big Bang, right? Because everything was condensed into a single point, if that's what they're talking about, the singularity. Um, and then there's also the quantum field that we can talk about, which exists before that. The problem with the quantum field ever doing anything is because um, scientists will say, well, this is before time. And then it begs the question, well, then why did anything happen? If there's no time to facilitate any action, why didn't the quantum bang go off a moment before or a moment after? There was no time, right? It, it, it becomes this weird, wacky world, which is all just theory. It's 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 not actually provable. We can't investigate it. And it's, it's just as much of a, a, as a faith-based um, belief system as uh, believing in God, in my opinion. You got it. This one coming in from Hill Hugger. Wait, Mark, do you have anything to respond to that? Because I actually would be interested if you do have anything. Sorry to cut in there, James. Just no problem. Yeah, yeah. So, so the the whole idea is that space time it's related to uh, gravity, and gravity distorts it a, a lot, actually. So, when you're talking about a singularity where everything in the universe is compressed down into a single point, you're talking about a complete distortion of space time, and we can't seem to see beyond one plank plank second after where we think the initial conditions of the bing bang were but i think we're pointing out that when you're talking about origin points it's kind of before space time actually got running but we don't know the conditions in there so when you're saying oh how can there be an event it's like well there may have been something to um facilitate that event which is not our local presentation of space time so when we're thinking about time like we we consider time like you know it, it's this time running um we're only talking about our local universe instead of any ex externality that may be there so um the whole idea of before because when you're using before you're using our local presentation of space time it may be completely 
the wrong word to use about anything prior to the singularity. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question, Naridon. says, Ronnie, you, you admit to the use of special pleading to justify that God, to justify God and believe that it's okay. Is special pleading acceptable when justifying other things outside of God? Okay, I said that it's a form of special pleading um, because uh, I can justify it. And I've said this from the beginning. It's God. It's the one thing in the universe that can be beyond um, the same restraints as something else or should be, um, uh, you know, the same rules should not apply to God is that they they apply to everything else. So in 99% of cases, you don't want to be guilty of special pleading. This is why Mark laughs. This is why the audience laughs. They go, oh, my God, he actually admitted that he's using some form of special pleading. It's kind of like this autistic, let's get over. Oh, my God, he admitted he was a racist or something like that. Like they they, they talk about the word, the title, instead of the actual meaning beyond it. So I, I concede some ground and say it's a form of special pleading. But if you look at the actual definition of special pleading, um, the, the person doesn't have justification for it. So special pleading should not be this big thing that everybody gets all up in arms about, because obviously whoever's using the special pleading is going to say that they're, they have justification for it. So I, I hate when terms outweigh the actual meaning and context of the conversation. Um, can I just add something? I, I find it kind of offensive as somebody on the autism spectrum for you to refer to I that. I knew it. As... I knew it. Well, I mean, that that's basically just an ad hominem. It's got nothing to do with your argument. It's just atheist so... and, and autism. I don't know what it is. Yeah, so so I, I just think that, that that's got nothing to do with it, and, and this is a logical fallacy that's been in philosophy for a while it doesn't need any kind of um neuro atypicality to to be a, a thing like most theist philosophers do acknowledge special pleading as a logical fallacy actually all of them do i don't know any that don't sorry james go ahead no problem this one coming in from do appreciate your question clarence tompkins says if time started at the big bang oh, we got that one so sofa King Titanic, Titan Uranus. So they had a question for you, Ronnie. They say, so atheists can't explain how something came from nothing, but God literally created man from dust. Do you know what logic is, Ronnie? Yeah, it's, it's, it's comical. It's like, oh my God. So you're saying that the, the universe could have possibly created everything on its own, but you believe God is? Um, don't you see how that's special pleading? It's, it's hilarious. It's really funny. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Lucas says, Ronnie, how do you make a difference between something outside of time and space and something that does not exist? That's an interesting question. I want to make sure. That... Repeat that one more time, James. They said, Ronnie, how do you make a difference between something outside of time and space and something that simply doesn't exist? Say, well, something you... that doesn't exist um, would not do anything. It would have no uh, features um, or it did have features and it died, right? Like, um, I don't believe my great grandmother is within space time or whatever, but she did exist. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, what's the person trying to get to there? <laughs> Hill Hugger says before time, there's no space, but there was stuff. Ronnie, Is that to like me or to Mark? <laughs> Can you repeat it, James? They said before time, there was no space, but there was stuff like matter. Um, not sure it's to me because I agree with it. I mean, before space time, so before time and space, there was still quantum field or you know, stuff. There was still things there. So I agree with that 100%. I, it's, it, you know, maybe this is, um, in your mind, Mark, a stupid question to ask, but if there is no time and space, where, where is, where was the quantum field? And, uh, why did anything happen if there was no time to facilitate an event? We don't know the exact answer to that, but mm -hmm. we do know. Does anybody that. have even an attempt at answering that question that I could find? Oh yeah. Yeah. So M theories basically says that, um, membranes collide, um, to where did the membranes come from? I'm talking about a point zero. Well, Is there I anybody think... that could possibly give me any theory as to how 
like the first thing came about without requiring there being something else to explain it because obviously i'm just gonna ask where did that thing come from and this is the whole problem with atheism yeah so so just because we can't explain where something comes from doesn't give anybody justification to insert a god as an explanation. well because it's the only other explanation as we went through at the beginning of the debate thanks yes yeah, so so or sorry question. magical uh limestones could have done it too guys it was a Blarney Stone, but thanks. Blarney um, Stone, so, God, and, and science. Yeah, yeah. So so um, there was stuff there, whether that stuff was sort of eternal because there is no time is, is completely possible. And the membranes may very well be um, eternal when we're talking about no time um, or time less, basically, um, and that um, a, a uh, physicality that we don't understand caused the membranes to collide. In Do you think Einstein's space. theory of a static state universe is silly because of scientific explanation or because of a philosophical problem with it? See, I think I think static state uh, theory was just stupid. I don't know how Einstein could have possibly believed the universe just always existed without there being a beginning. But that's literally what you suggest about whatever it is that created the quantum field. You say, well, there was just this static state of eternalness and it just always was. That's literally what I Einstein believed about the universe, but the, the inquisitive mind says, no, there must be a cause. There must be an explanation. What you don't realize is that's either going to eternally be the, the problem for atheists is, well, what caused this thing that we now think is the beginning thing, or you're going to have to accept that there is this thing beyond space and time that decided to create the universe, and that's God. So the membranes collide in 11 dimensional space and there's tons of these things happening leading to them. The math suggests that it is a many worlds theory. And where did these the membranes come creating from? creating universes all the time in this cosmos with, with membranes. Where did the membranes come from? Why are they there? Thank you. That's my answer. Okay. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Coffee Mom says, Ronnie, not knowing the answer doesn't equal God. No, it's not that we don't know the answer. The answer could be anything. We could find element X. We could find quantum field Zargablon. We could go 3,000 million years into the future and realize that there is a million causes for our current understanding of what we think is the first thing. So I'm totally, totally open-minded to science finding out uh, tons of things that my little brain can't understand. I don't even understand fully how I'm talking to you right now, James, because I don't get electronics and telecommunication. Um, so there's a lot of things that uh, we don't fully understand, but we can still have a, a general idea of, of how they work, right? So um, again, this is a philosophical problem dating back to Aristotle and the boys. It didn't matter that they didn't have uh, the scientific tools at their disposal. They were still at the same point that we are today. How does something come from nothing? How do we we avoid the problem of infinite of an infinite past when we know that can't exist? You got it. This one coming in from um, you appreciate. I just I Go just ahead. want to add that my 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 education is in um, networking and distributed systems, so I do understand how we're talking right now. Oh, you, great. That's awesome, man. You're so smart. Thanks for thanks for uh, sharing that with us. I'm sure that had nothing to do with your ego. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Samir Farsain says, Ronnie is right. It's called proof by contradiction. Do you remember what this is referring to? I can't remember that. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's all they say. Ronnie, do you know what Oh, um, I'm basically saying that at some point the atheist is going to um, contradict themselves. I think that's what I was saying before. There's going to be some sort of contradiction. Um, I can't remember specifically. It just kind of rang a bell there. I don't know. Mark, do you remember what I was saying? No, I, I don't okay. think you can prove stuff by having contradictory. You can disprove somebody's argument by having a contradiction, but I don't think you can prove another argument by having a contradiction in somebody else's that argument I, has to stand on its own merits rather than be based upon what somebody else believes or what somebody else argues i think we can if we know enough about the circumstance so if if there's two people in the room and an object goes missing and it could have only been one of those two people if i can prove that person a didn't steal the object then we know it's person b but you could always argue well we don't know all the circumstances maybe there was a, another possibility and now we're, we're blaming this 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 person because we think there's only two possibilities but like i said if we know enough about the circumstances like we have a camera in the room showing nobody else entered uh around the premises there's alarms we don't actually have to prove who stole or who took the object in order to know who took the object right would you that, agree with that mark 
No, no, that that's a dichotomy. Uh, well, then that a, that that is the yeah, fundamental Ronnie, difference. Let me finish. Let me finish. I just want to let point out finish. that is the let fundamental me, thing. Ronnie, we disagree come on, with. man! Like seriously, um, I'm done. Dude. That that's that's <laughs> not that's not a contradiction. That is a dichotomy. What you're describing. So if you've got two, people, yeah, I'm moving on. Can only be one of those two people. Um, if it can only be one of those two people and you eliminate one, um, the dichotomy says it must be the other. A contradiction is when you have an yes. explanation that yes. has internal details that do not equate to the same thing. So if you've got two two yes, people and one person's um, story is, say, contradictory, um, you cannot assume it's the other person's story that is correct. Both can still be wrong. This one yes. coming in. Do you want to say something, Ronnie? I don't want to cut you off. Oh, no, no. I just said yes. You got it. Let me just double check. Oh, this one from Delaney says, if there are an infinite number of alternative hypotheses, is the percentage chance of our hypothesis infinitely small? Oh, is that to me? I don't even know how to. I think it is because I would 100% agree with them. Sorry, James. I gotta ask you to repeat that again. I know if you, I've asked you a few times here, but no, it's all right. I'm. I, I can you remind me either of you what the hypothesis was referring okay. to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was basically Ronnie saying that you know I just want to get it to fifty percent either way, um, um, God or sort of another explanation kind of thing. The problem is that those aren't the only explanations that exist. So if we have infinite hypotheses, how do you get 50% out of that when each of these un, unsupported hypotheses okay. has an equal chance? Of I can answer correct? that perfectly. Thank you for, I really appreciate you clarifying that, Mark. I really do. Cause I was, I, I've asked James a couple of times to, to repeat the question. I thought for sure that one was for you. And my mind kind of wandered halfway through uh, James bringing that up. Um, okay. So I've had this uh, conversation with a lot of atheists. I've had this conversation with a lot of uh, uh, philosophers and, and whatnot. And at the end of it, they do agree. Um, you only have two options. Either God created the universe or God didn't create the universe. We could create some sort of hybrid where you have this little leprechaun type thing or this magic stone, but essentially it's going to be so much more closer to God than it would be any sort of atheist explanation for how the universe came about, because no atheist is going to, in good faith, suggest that such a thing could actually be responsible for the universe. An atheist only in good faith actually believes that a science, scientific explanation, a natural explanation. So when they say, oh, there could be these other ones, that's it's just a debate game that they're playing. First of all, they don't actually believe that any of those possibilities are true. And secondly, you can actually show how any of those examples they could bring up from magic stones to leprechauns to uh, spaghetti monsters in the sky. If, if those things actually are responsible for the creation of the universe, um, if they have no cause, they are the, the, the prime originator of all that is, then they would be that would be God. But of course, a plate of spaghetti can't create the universe. Of course, a stone can't create the universe. Of course, even Superman himself can't create the universe. Only God can. So there is only two explanations or two possible options. It, it, God created the universe or the universe just came about on its own. I think I've demonstrated how the universe cannot just come about on its own. Therefore, God must have done it. This one coming in from, do appreciate it. Clarence Tompkins says, if the quantum field is beyond the cosmos, why does there need to be a, quote, where did that come from? Since it's beyond space, time, like your God. And you get to say God doesn't need an explanation. God would be the only thing beyond an explanation. See, what, what people have to understand here is, is re respecting that if one thing is true, then the next thing must be true. If, if, I, if, if a Muslim asks me, if Allah is true, if Allah exists, do you think it's reasonable um, that he would want people to wear uh, or women to wear head coverings or something like that? Um, I'm not going to start arguing whether or not women should wear head coverings. I'm going to be honest and say, well, yeah, if Allah is true, then the Muslim faith should be followed, etc. But it seems very difficult for the atheist to do this. When I say, you know, if, if, if a being created the universe, that being must be God. They don't want to say, yeah, they want to play this, this really 
shitty game of, of bad faith where they say, no, how do I, how do I know a leprechaun didn't create the universe? Merck doesn't believe anything but the universe created itself. He doesn't believe in anything magical. So whatever other option he brings up would be a bad faith argument, or it could be an argument that I could easily show is just bullshit. Mark, do you have anything to say to that? Oh, sure. Yeah. So, so what we're doing is making an analogy to, um, um, Ronnie's argument. So when when I bring up these things, it's basically demonstrating that if if you do use special pleading as part of your rationale and your logic, you could do that for literally anything. You could assign that special pleading to whatever creature or whatever thing that you wish to. Um, the, the, the real funny thing about this is that Ronnie's basically stating what a terrible thing that I'm doing to provide these exceptions for the magic and the things that I'm suggesting, while he is doing exactly the same logic to his own God. And that's the hilarious thing. I know it's a terrible argument that shouldn't I, be I actually believed. believe in God. That's you don't kind believe in of any of those point. things. If, well, if you believed in that a magical stone, if you actually believe that it's possible for a magic stone or a plate of spaghetti to create the universe, then you'd be making a good faith argument. I'd be saying, OK, you know what? I, I could take this guy seriously. But you don't. Right. You yeah, don't. So, so those are bullshit it. examples of what could have created the universe. Yeah. I give you an example of what I truly believe. You don't believe in anything. That's why you can't bring anything to the table. You're an atheist. You don't believe in anything. I believe in lots of stuff. Like no, a, you don't. an atheist, an atheist just doesn't believe in God. It doesn't mean we don't believe in anything. I believe that this world is real. This coffee cup is real. That I'm talking to you. That that social justice is a good thing. That, you're, you're going on I out a real leap of, of faith there, buddy, to believe that. Well, that, well I'm uh, believing in tons of things. Real, if, I just, if, I just, if I could just, if I could just finish, Ronnie, if you could stop interrupting for once. Um, the 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 whole idea that it has to be believed in order for it to be true is absolute nonsense. What we have here that. is ontology whether something exists it's basically is it metaphysically true whether you believe it or not has no has no effect on whether something is true or not i could disbelieve in this coffee cup it doesn't make the coffee cup wink out you're making existence. such a non i could here, believe right? that a unicorn is on my desk it doesn't make any more credible that that is actually the case great um th so whether or not i believe in the things that i postulate to basically make an analogy to ronnie's argument has no effect on whether the argument is it, ha it, it sound has a bearing on whether or not it is a good faith or a bad faith argument logically valid sorry logically valid or not it's and, and no i'm and i'm i'm believe. talking specifically about good faith here so a good faith yeah, argument yes is is somebody who when they they bring up a hypothetical it's something that they themselves could actually believe in or support since you is don't that, actually believe that anything else could have created the universe other than a natural explanation no magical space monster, no God, no nothing like that. You don't believe in any of that. You're just bringing that up as a way to say, well, there's no way you could disprove it, even though okay. you yourself don't believe it. Do you okay, get that, so Mark? Does the audience get it? James, do you get it? I mean, that's the difference between a good faith could, and a bad if faith. If I could argument. just address it, if I could just address it. So um, when when basically Ronnie just said is you've got to believe in the hypothetical in order to bring it up, which is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. We bring up plenty of uh, hypotheticals that are not real. That's the whole idea of a hypothetical is we bring up something that A, did not happen, and B, is not real. I but you don't believe any of these hypotheticals are Ronnie, possible. Ronnie, come on, man. You don't believe um, any of them are possible you literally don't so that's why i don't take it seriously mate i i think it's possible i think there's a very no you very don't think a plate of spaghetti could have created the universe you literally don't you're okay, bullshitting so, when you say that james yeah, we can move I, on I i'm tired of hearing this yeah so okay so so regardless of a hypothetical is brought up i might think that bring up a hypothetical about uh, god writing my name you only bring that up as an attempt to try to break down Ronnie, what i'm saying man, you don't actually you believe it. it's a bad faith argument i want to move on you, you can't just talk to over the top of me. Come on, You've already, You're just repeating yourself now. And there's other questions. We've both responded I, to it. We can move on. I, I, I can bring up a hypothetical about God writing my name in the sky in order to convince me he exists. That does not mean I believe that Okay, so then, happen. Mark, I'm going to ask you again. What options that, do you think are there? God did it. The universe did it. Give me a third stop, option that you Ronnie, actually stop, take seriously. Stop, that you actually yourself. take seriously. Don't calm tell me to down, stop. Don't do your calm descending, whatever. Down. I want to move on. You're the one who's getting all, sorry, a word I can't say about this topic because it's within yeah, your nature. Talking I would like to move on. Talking over someone does not improve your position. Um, so, so <laughs> never uh, I, I may not 
believe that this this occurs, right? So I've, I've completely lost my train of thought because of Ronnie's little tactics here. Um, I, I might not believe that occurs, but that's still a very valid. You don't even point. think it's possible. I, that's well, the difference. Just to hear one at a time. Wow. Fine, then um, I'm going to say something after he talks because this is just ridiculous. You want this to continue. Obviously, I'm not just going to shut up and let you say all these points and not have anything to say back. We're now repeating ourselves. You want to throw on this one little tiny cherry on top of I everything talk? else you said. Now I'm going to throw a cherry on top of what Thanks. I said. And we're just going to Could keep I building up our talk? cakes. Could I please talk? Um, so, so just because that hypothetical, I don't believe it can happen, doesn't mean I'm arguing in bad faith because it is a hop hypothetical that I'm actually putting forward. So let me explain Ronnie's to you how whole... it is. Hold on, just for the love of Pete, can... Ronnie, you do have to let him finish. He's saying the same thing. Listen, I, this I, reminds I'm me. I've finished. had another guest who sometimes will say, oh, "But he's misrepresenting me," and I, I have to tell him the same time. You can point that out right after, but you, you when you jump in so early, it's yeah. like, well, just let him finish, and then you can go back and you can say, hey, here, audience, let me show you something. He just said blah, 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 blah. He just said that about five minutes ago. It was the exact same thing. It was in different words, so I'll say it What it was in those words, and I told you I already gave the response of this. Like, you, if you have that kind of, like, meta kind of, like, leading the it's conversation. It's hard like, for the Q&A the section. Key, shut up. I, I just... Why, like, I don't interrupt you, Ronnie. Like, why are you interrupting me? I'm just saying, here's like one way you can handle this. And you, even me, you interrupt. I, like, I just like, geez, do you, does it make sense you can do that? Like, I just want to give him a chance to finish. Okay, right there. It's like you, you were asking a question as you were talking. So that's why I was saying when I jumped in there, I wasn't trying to interrupt you. I'm just saying it's during the Q&A session. So it's, it's kind of hard to expect that this is going to go on for a, a lot of different back and forths. So I'm like, okay, we can move on to the next one. He's like, but no, 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 I, I still want to say this. So I'm just kind of frustrated. Okay, okay I'm almost enough. finished. Hold I'm on. almost finished. Let's... I'm almost finished. It's, Sorry, James. It is true. We've been on this one for a while, and there there are a couple more questions. So okay, and pardon me if I did ask a question. I'll trust you on that, Ronnie. That I must have asked a question. I think it was meant to be rhetorical, but frankly, it happens all the time where people understand or interpret rhetorical questions as like literal questions. So. Not a problem. Sorry, my uh, sorry for telling you to shut up, because if you uh, if you were just answering a question, then I get it. So go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I, I just wanted to finish, and I'm almost done. Um, it, it's not it's not arguing in bad faith if you bring up a hypothetical that you do not believe in or you do not think could happen as an analogy to someone else's argument. That is not bad faith arguing at all. That's all I want to say. Okay, and I want to explain how it is. If if say I'm I'm defending somebody in a murder trial. Or not even a murder trial. That, that's 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 too technical. I'm just defending somebody, and they say, "Well, you know, how, how do you know this happened?" And my response is, "Well, it could be this guy. It could be this guy. It could be this. It could be that." If I if I don't even think any of what I'm suggesting is possible, they're bad faith arguments. It's not that I don't think any one of them specifically happened because it's true. I could bring up a, a multitude of scenarios which one of them could be potentially true, and I don't know which one. But if I don't think any of them are possible, then it is a bad faith argument that I don't even believe in. So because Mark can't even bring up one example of how the universe could be created that he actually thinks is possible beyond a natural explanation, there is only two explanation, God or the universe. This one coming in from, do appreciate your question. Brian Stevens says to the debaters, what if God was one of us? Do you guys know who that was by? Was that Alanis Morris? Just a what this one coming just in? Just a bum like one of us. Yes, I, I get you, Brian. She is. This I think one Joan coming... Osborne did a cover of that one. This one from Beamsy says, "For Ronnie, one, I am not an atheist. Two, you're conflating nothing and nothingness. Three, talk to a scientist, and that will show you how you're wrong." Ronnie. All I could say is I do a lot of research on this topic to see what proponents of both sides say. And I, I try to look at the middle ground um, in terms of what what they kind of respect about the other person's side. And um, it, it's very interesting to me to see that on like a, a I don't want to call this a, a lower tier format, but it's not exactly like we're watching William Lane Craig debate Krauss. Um, but I, I, I kind of feel like atheists on a, on a lower level, as well as Christians and, and theists, we, we, we look at the other side as if they're stupid. Oh, my God, they're so dumb. How could they possibly think this? But 
I mean, that's so disrespectful. I mean, it, there's millions of people on both sides. So we should see where the other person is coming from. I get the atheist claim. You can't show me God. So I refuse to believe in him. You can't prove to me this being. So I'm always going to be skeptical. But when I bring up how atheism and, and science don't have a way of describing how something can come from nothing, how they're always going to have this problem of, of infinite uh, regress, they just don't want to accept it. They just want to act like a pit bull. Show me God. Where's your God? You haven't proven anything. And yeah, it, it's just it's really interesting. This one coming in from do appreciate it. Squid Super Hunk says, I'm confused about Ronnie's goals. Is he just trying to, quote unquote, win the debate? Does he actually want to make convincing arguments between special pleading and nitpicking about the arguments? I'm not sure. I think the one unique thing that I, I bring to the debate, because it's very hard for anybody to bring uh, something truly unique to uh, an atheist versus theist debate. Everything's been said. Anything Mark could possibly say has been said. Um, I think everything that I've said has been said, except for one thing, and that is highlighting the importance of of uh, special pleading being uh, permitted to our side. It seems like a lot of deists and theists, they just don't, it's like a dirty word. But when you actually talk to them in private about it, they're like, yes, absolutely. If we weren't to use special pleading, then we wouldn't actually be believing in God. And then we they talk about justifying their special pleading. But they know that this word kind of looks bad uh from the other side so they just shy away from it but i'm like no what's the point of shying away they just own it <laughs> it's god is god he's the one thing that's allowed to have special pleading what's wrong with that you got it this one coming in from let me just check if there are any last ones otherwise i do want to remind you folks our guests are linked in the description highly encourage you to check them out malavia good to see you thanks for your Membership chat said, sorry to miss the stream, James. See you soon. Thanks, Malavia, for your support, and we're glad you're here. Better late than never. And want to mention, it is indeed true. The conference is coming soon, folks. We're excited about this. We do want to say, my dear friends, you don't want to miss this. It's coming up on Saturday, November 19th in Plano, Texas. We hope to see you there in person. In the meantime, we want to say our guests are linked in the description. We highly encourage you to check out their links want to say thank you very much, Ronnie and Mark. It's been a true pleasure to have you with us tonight. Thank you, James. So good to be here. And thanks for uh, engaging in the debate, Ronnie. With that, we'll be back. I'll be back in just a moment with a post credit scene letting you know about juicy upcoming debates. So stick around for that, and I'll be back in just a moment. gentlemen want to say thank you very much for being here it has been a truly fun debate don't worry i'm going to pull up my sweet little camera here i've got to tell you my dear friends we are excited for a couple of things in particular let me just do a little camera capture here want to say my dear friends video capture device we are thrilled to have you here here's what i'm going to do is i'm going to Oh. Yeah. But let me tell you this. I want to tell you about some of these juicy. Yeah. Yeah. This is a little bit better. All right. 
right, fair enough. Thanks for your patience. I want to say, my dear friends, thank you for coming by during this debate. It's been a fun one, as well as well, like two seconds. This is going to make my life so much easier in the future. Good. There we go. Because I've got to tell you, my dear friends, here's what I want to tell you. We are pumped about this upcoming conference. If you have not heard about it or have not seen it, I've got to show you this. My dear friends, we got to pull in another, another camera thing. Okay, two seconds. But I want to say, uh, is it, no, it's not even working. Two seconds. Here we go. Paste. There we go. So you remember your first time doing this. All right, two seconds. Here we go. want to say, my dear friends, you might be thinking, James, uh, what exactly is this? We've heard you talk about this conference. What exactly is that? Well, I'll tell you right now, my dear friends, this conference is going to be huge. It is going to be big. It is going to be ginormous. So let me show you right now on screen. DebateCon 2 is what we are hosting, and it is going to be amazing. The link for in-person tickets is in the description box. Highly want to encourage you to check out that link as well as, not only that, I just realized I've got to link the guests from tonight. Let me share the Indiegogo link with you. You might be wondering, what is Indiegogo, James, in particular? It is... Okay, got that. Whew. Link. Good to see you there in the old live chat. Dingley Bumbus, as well as Wilmar and Jeremy Nolan. And hemp equals cannabis and cannabis. Glad to have you here. Brandon Johnson, good to see you. According to, says, amazing. Jupiter Darman, good to see you. CD, glad you're here. And Brandon Johnson, thanks for coming by. So the link to the crowdfund mentioned in stream is right here and i want to give you guys this pitch this is going to be tremendous in particular it is in the description box as well i pinned this link to the crowdfund at the top of the chat because you might be wondering well what exactly is it what's this debate con thing this is our debate conference it's the second one we're doing we did our first one in january of this year and it was a huge success people really enjoyed it so they're like hey man you should totally do another one get some new speakers in addition to last time in other words we're changing it up getting some new faces in there we have a lot of the same speakers from last time but a lot of new ones as well and i've got to tell you you guys this is going to be epic so let me show you this in particular crowdfund if you are wondering you're like well what debates exactly well here are some of the debates that you can see up above my camera view here so for example destiny versus nuance bro is right above me and then right above me as well you can see Justin Gibson versus Alex Stein. That's on whether or not queer theory is correct. As well as there will be a debate with, as you can see on the far side of the screen, Aaron Raw and Daniel Hokikachu. That is going to be a big one, folks. We're really excited about it. You don't want to miss it. So that by itself is just going to be a monstrous mammoth debate. And you might be thinking, well, James, okay, tell me more. How exactly do you uh, do this kind of thing? Well, we use Indiegogo. You can see the logo for them on screen. Indiegogo is basically a crowdfund, like Kickstarter or GoFundMe. And it is so easy. This is a way in which we basically cover things like venue costs, stuff like that. You might be thinking, well, yeah, but James, like, uh, do I have to create an account? That sounds like a pain. I'm tired. Who has time for that? You can even sign in with your Facebook. It's that easy. And we are raising funds for the venue cost because it costs about $2,300 just to rent the venue. So this is kind of a safety net. So we can try to raise a little, you could say like a kind of a cushion that way for ticket sales, it makes it a little bit easier. We're like, okay, we don't have to rely too much on ticket sales because we're just starting this. We're pretty new at it. And so if you're like, hey, James, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe I'll throw in a few bucks. You can. You can put in $3, for example. You can put in 10 bucks or 25 But $3, the price of a cup of coffee, it's that cheap. And the cool thing is 
This helps us make these events possible. So I am guessing you're going to enjoy these debates. And if you're watching them, we're saying, hey, we're going through this challenge of making it so that we can host these public debates live for you to watch. And so we're saying, hey, would you be willing to throw three bucks in to help us make this possible? Last time we, it was like maybe slightly below breaking even. So it was a little bit of a, you could say a little bit in the red, but we, like I said, did it because we love doing what we do and because we think that this is an important thing for building relationships and putting out epic debates for modern day debates. So we think it's a good investment. But let's say you're like, yeah, I want to watch it. And you're like, hey, uh, can I watch it and not put in any money? I'd like to just do that. Frankly, you can. All of our debates are going to be public. They're going to be live for everybody to watch. You don't have to put in a dime. So this is our, this is instead of us saying, Hey, it's behind a paywall, which we've done in the past. We've done it like this, where it's like, Hey, we would love for your help. Would you be willing to help us? If you are going to watch these debates by throwing in a few bucks as that helps us make these events possible. And not only that, it's easy to do it, but you're like, well, I was like, I don't know. Is it easy? Like, yeah, like I said, you can sign in with Facebook. And then here's some of the perks that you can see on screen. So for example, you can just throw in three bucks with no perk. You can throw in 25 bucks and you get a modern day debate, debate con embroidered postcard sent to you in memory. Or you could say thanks for your donation. Other ones though, so you can see on the right side of the screen is if you wanna ask a question, like a super chat question, there's no way we can guarantee we'll get to read those during the live debate. You can ensure that your question is read first by making a $50 gift toward the crowdfund where we'll actually read your question during the Q&A even though you're not there in person. So we actually read those questions before the in-person audience just because you supported the event that much. $100 is a Zoom chat with me. And you might be thinking, well, I don't know. Why would I want to do that? Well, one thing is... We can share the different types of software that we use for modern day debate to make the show possible, all that good stuff. Whatever it is that you want to talk about or hear about, that's something that is an option. But not only that, my dear friends, you might be wondering, well, like, I don't know, have you done this before, James? And it seems kind of like a leap. We have. We've successfully done this crowdfund strategy before. For example, we raised the funds for Dr. Michael Shermer, the atheist in this epic debate between Christian Mike Jones and Dr. Michael Shermer. That was a massive one. I want to say thanks everybody for making that possible as well as here's another one. We did it for this debate between Kenny and Matt Dillahunty. If you guys remember that one, that was a juicy debate. That one happened uh, it was about less than a year ago, as well as this one that you can see in the bottom right of your screen. Now, Debate Con Part 1, we raised $2,700 to help cover part of the venue costs, as this time we found a cheaper venue, and that's really cool, because we knew we were like, you know what, we don't, we don't really want to like make this, we want to make this as affordable as possible, you could put it that way. And some people are like, well, like, I don't know, is, like, is the venue going to be good enough? Like, I think it's a quality venue, it's an economical venue, that's true, but the point is, we're like, hey, we want to make it so that it's affordable for people that, let's say, want to buy tickets. But not only that, you might be thinking, well, James, like, what are the expenses, though? Like, I, you know, if I watch this debate, like, you know, did you actually spend any money to make it possible? Well, here are some of the ways that we are spending money to make this conference possible so that we can stream, stream all of these debates live for the public. In particular, flights for the speakers. That's a big cost. The venue cost. That's another major cost hotel nights for the speakers, as well as the per diem or food for the speakers. So there are a lot of costs involved, and that's why we were saying, hey, we would love your support. We really do appreciate that. And I've got to tell you, my dear friends, want to say thanks for all of your support of Modern Day Debate. If you are like, hey, like, oh, you know, maybe I'll think about that. Like, okay, it's, uh, it's interesting. I've got to tell you, it really is, and I am absolutely pumped for this epic conference coming up. So I want to say thank you guys for all of your support. Do you remember in chat, what date is this conference? Do you remember? I'll give you a hint, it's a Saturday. If you can put it in chat, I'm curious if you know. And what city in particular 
is it in? Do you guys remember? This is absolutely essential. Wilmar and Clarence Tompkins are right, as well as Rebecca and Delaney. It is 1119. So November 19th in Plano, Texas. This is going to be huge, you guys. I want to say thank you guys. We are excited about it. It's going to be epic. It's going to be monstrous. And it's going to be tremendous. So I want to say that. Looking up here, something in the old live chat. I want to say thank you guys for all of your support. Seriously, this is a fun time. We really do appreciate you hanging out with us. Our vision at Modern Day Debate is we want to provide a neutral platform so that everybody has their chance to make their case on a level playing field. So we want to say thank you guys for all of your support as we strive to make that possible. And I've got to tell you, my dear friends, we appreciate all of your guys' support. There are many ways that you guys support our channel. And 99% of you, I want to say thank you guys. You are super positive. You're super supportive. You guys are honestly super helpful, and I just I appreciate it. Even if you're like, hey, James, I've never put in like a dime. I've, let's see, let's say you're like, I've never put in a dime, and I've, let's say, you're like, I, I also uh, haven't, what's the word I'm looking for, you know, put into the crowdfund or whatever. Even just being here, we hope you know that we really appreciate you being here because that makes this an eclectic community of different people from different walks of life. And so I want to say thank you guys for all of your support that way. Other ways, if you're like, hey, you know, like uh, what other ways? Like are there ways to help support the channel? Hitting like really does help. You don't have to, you don't have to drop a dime for that. And that's something that rather than telling you hit like, I want to say I will just sincerely ask you like, hey, would you be willing to help boost us in the algorithm by hitting like? Because we want to expand our vision across YouTube so that everybody has an opportunity for a neutral platform because we believe that YouTube deserves a better class of a debate channel and we're going to give it to them. So I want to say thank you guys for all of your support. And Chris G says, if you give to the crowd fund, find me in Plano, Texas, and I'll give you a hug. Chris G will be at the conference. We're excited about that and we appreciate that. So thank you. We appreciate that in Plano, Texas, which is right next to Dallas. It is going to be amazing. Seriously. We are excited about this. I want to say thanks for all your help. But I see you in the old live chat. Thanks for being with us. D-E-R. It can. Masson Gaming says hello. Glad to have you with us. Okay, then. 22 okay. Glad to have you. It says, hey, James, where are all the videos recently uploaded and popular? Good question. So YouTube changed up their format for channels. You have to go to the tabs. Look at the tabs where usually it used to say like videos and you could just click and it'll just boom. It'll drop all the videos. Now you have to either click on videos where it's going to show you videos that were uploaded but that were never live streamed or you can click on the live tab and that'll show you basically all of our debates. So you won't see all of our debates under the videos tab anymore because YouTube separated it where the, the videos tab used to be where you'd see all the videos that were uploaded plus all the live streams in one category. But then YouTube was like, now nah, we're going to split it. We're going to have videos only be those that were uploaded. And then live streams are just going to get their own tab called live. So thanks for that question. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why YouTube did that, but yeah, it'll, you know, Dingley Bumba says, Aboot, James is Canadian or maybe just tired. I'm just tired. I should go. But want to say thank you guys for all of your support. Seriously, it means more than you know. Living Room Speaker says, thanks for all you do. Really enjoy your channel. Thanks for that. That really means a lot. We appreciate your positivity. I love you guys. Thanks for everything. I'm excited to see you. We'll have a, Our next debate is actually tomorrow night. So that'll be a fun one. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. We'll see you at the next one.